Hello, you guys. Hello, everyone. How are you all on this wonderful night, wonderful evening? What a great day it is to be back in the presence of our Heavenly Father, Yahuwah, and our personal Messiah and Savior, Yahusha HaMashiach. Um, tonight's message is kind of deep, okay? Um, bear with me on this message because it's, it's a lot of information. But this message is entitled, The Real Black History. This is Black History Month, so I don't see an issue or a problem with talking about black history. I mean, because we did receive from the oppressor one month of 28 days to be able to cover our contributions to not only American society, but this whole entire world. Um, it's, a, it's a lot to cover in this message. Um, and hopefully this message will spark thought. It will spark thought, but then also it would compel you and it would urge you to understand and know exactly who you are. Now, this is the real Black History Month, okay? This is the real Black History Month. And the reason why I say that this is the real Black History Month is because this year, um, in, particularly, in particular, this year, it seems like a whole lot of, a whole lot of information that has been hidden has come out about who the true Hebrew Israelites are of scripture. Now we got to talk about that because if we don't talk about who we are as black people, and I'm going to use that term black tonight so people can know, um, those who are coming on can know exactly who I'm talking about. So I'm going to use the terms African-Americans and blacks, but I'm afraid, I'm not afraid of a lot. I'm not afraid at all, but I'm, I'm afraid that if we don't talk about our history and we don't understand where we came from, where we are and where we're headed, this history will be lost. It will be lost. OK, in obscurity and our children, the next generation will not know who they are. See, they're trying their hardest to eliminate and erase black struggle and the contributions and the exploitation of black folk. They're trying to erase our history and our origins, and they're trying to erase who we are as a bloodline. And so because they're trying to erase it and our children don't care about it, it just seems like the same things will continue to happen. And, and we must realize that that is one of the reasons why our black people are in the condition and in the struggle that they are in now. And right. Why? Because they don't know their history. Our black people don't know their history. And so we don't realize many of our people don't realize that they are repeating history and they don't understand that they are feeding right into those who oppressed and enslaved us. We're, we're dancing to the same beat. We are dancing to the same music. We are being brainwashed in the educational system. We're being indoctrinated and we don't even care that we're being indoctrinated. We're dancing uh, again to their music. We're watching their movies. In fact, we're playing the parts in their movies. We are the actors and the actresses. We are the football players, the basketball players, the baseball players. We are the ones who keep the American economy going. If it's not for the black dollar, then the American, uh, infrastructure or economy would crash. If we pulled out, we, matter of fact, if we pulled out, everything would be done today. And so we are the ones who add the spice and add the flavor to this society and culture. Now, everyone knows if anyone has been with the Davis ministry for, you know, for some time now, or since the beginning, you all know that I am not a racist preacher. I'm not a racist teacher. I am unbiased. I am definitely unbiased, but we must talk about and cover who we truly are. You understand? So that it won't go hidden and it won't go missing and it won't go suppressed. Listen to what I'm saying. So I'm going to start off in the book of um, Baruch. Now, this is, uh, I believe, a part of the Apocrypha, but I'm going to start off um, in Baruch. But, um, we got to get a grip on where we came from and who we are. Many of our people think that we came from Egypt. We don't understand that Egypt was our first slavery. Now, um, the first Atlantic, the first um, Atlantic 
the transatlantic slave trade, it really began in 1526. We were brought over here in, in the Carolinas at the time in 1526. But that slave trade, we rebelled. And so that means that that slave trade at that time failed. But then in 1565, we were brought over here. That was known as the first European settlement. In 1565, the first set of Africans from West Africa came over here. Our ancestors, Hebrew Israelites, came over here to the United States of America in 1565 in St. Augustine, Florida. All right. And then we know the second set of slaves came in 1619. I'm going, but I'm like I say, I'm going to get into this thing deep tonight. And um, it's a lot of information. Now, um, we, most of Judah, most of Yah the tribe of Yahuda, okay? Most of Judah is in the United States of America today. Although many of us are scattered to the four corners of the earth. Now, the Hebrew Israelites, the 10 tribes are still in Africa, but then we still have, but we also have some of them spread out. We have some of them spread out, but they are majority in, in, in Northwestern Africa. That's Algeria. And we have some in West Africa. Then we have some of our brothers and sisters in South Africa. All right. But Judah is scattered to the four corners of the earth. So I'm talking um, the Caribbean, South America, North America, Europe, and Africa. We're spread to the four corners of the earth. And so the reason why we've been treated the way we've been treated for 400 years is because we are those true people. We are the Hebrew Israelites in scripture. But to keep us under wraps and to keep us hidden they did not teach about our history in the secular educational system. They did not teach us who we are through Christianity. They did not teach us who we are even through the entertainment. They don't teach us who we are in no institution on the face of this whole planet. And so this is the reason why we walk around adopting every single culture, not knowing who we are. If the Italians are cool one year, we want to be the Italians. If the Spanish are cool one year, we want to be them. The Japanese, the Chinese, whatever culture or whatever ethnic group comes out with something and come out with something that is publicized and something that is 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 disseminated and something that um is, is, is highly promoted, we jump on every bandwagon. This is the reason why we wear every hairstyle. This is the reason why we wear every piece of name brand clothing. This is the reason why we drink every alcoholic beverage. This is the reason why we shop everywhere. And, and it's because of that that has taken us far away from who we are. And so we, because we don't have an identity and because we don't know our real history, we adopt every single thing that we see. And it just seems like the more we adopt everything we see, we continue more and more to go against one another. And so one of the ways that they did that was to keep us from reproducing. When I mean reproducing, not only reproducing, all right, in terms of being able to reproduce life, but reproduce wealth. We can't reproduce wealth. We can't reproduce human life. We can't reproduce anything. And that was systematically done to keep us under wraps. It was to keep us from being able to rise up so that we would know who we are and then we would stop buying into Hollywood. We would stop buying into this false educational indoctrinational system. We would stop killing one another. We would stop filling up the prison industrial complex system. We would stop listening to this filthy, violent, sexual uh, immorality in the music. We would stop killing our children. We would stop going against our parents. You understand what I'm saying? And so... And so in order for us to know who we are, right, where we've been, and especially where we're going in these end times, we must know who we are in scripture. If we, and, and here's the thing, because we don't know who we are in the most high Yah, then this is the reason why our people are still doing the same exact things they've been doing every single year. They celebrate the same pagan holidays, right? Valentine's Day getting ready to come up. They still celebrate that. They celebrate a Halloween, which is surrounded in witchcraft. They celebrate it. They celebrated Thanksgiving, which was the killing and it was the extermination of the Native Americans. And the Europeans came over there and gave them smallpox, right? 
And so it was the colonization of this nation, the Native Americans. And so we celebrate murder. We celebrate rape. We celebrate torture over here on these pagan holidays. And the reason why we're still doing that is because we don't know who we are. We're celebrating Christmas. All of these are Roman European festivals in this European westernized world. So all of these celebrations, all of these traditions, all of these holidays were put out there and they were masqueraded by these fun loving entertaining and these and these and these and these innocuous titles so that we would be under the oppressor's hand still feeding in the system not knowing who we are okay so let let, let me get in here now i now I, I don't care who this message touches tonight i really don't care because I must touch this because the black preachers, okay, in these modern day Christian churches under the 501c3, ones who have been trained by seminary, they don't talk about this. They don't cover this. And I wouldn't even say seminary trained. I would say cemetery brainwashed, mean, meaning that they have been brainwashed to be dead. They've been brainwashed to be dead in the spirit by not talking about and covering all of the atrocities that has happened to black folk. Now, you must realize that these Europeans, these barbaric tribes, they came over here and they took what belonged to the Native Americans. And when they did that, they established rules and laws that would uh, further exploit the Native Americans after they killed them off and took the land. But then they would go right to West Africa and they would take an unsuspected people. They would take them from their homeland and strip them of their name, their identity, their culture, their race, their identity, and their savior. And they will bring them to the uh, same nation, the same country that they exploited and the same country that they had taken from the Native Americans and they had us to enrich their nation for them. You, you, you got, okay? So they're not a native anywhere. The white supremacy, the Europeans are not a Native America. They're not a Native American anywhere. You understand what I'm saying? So let's, let, let's get in. Let's get in. Listen to what it says here. This is Baruch. This is Baruch chapter 2 verses 29 to 35. Baruch. You might, you might be able to pull it up on your phone. Baruch. B-A-R-U-C-H. Baruch chapter 2 verses 29 to 35. It says, if ye will not hear my voice, surely this very great multitude shall be turned into a small number among the nations where I will scatter them. See, we've been turned into a very small number. Why? Because many of us are in our graves. Why? Because of gang violence. Because of gang violence, rape. All right. Black on black crime, black on black genocide, police genocide. This is the reason why this is the reason why the multitude, a very great multitude shall be turned into a small number. But then not only because of the killings, not only because of the mass incarceration, but also because of the fact that we don't know who we are. And so that has made the multitudes even smaller. And so it says, if ye will not hear my voice, surely this very great multitude he, the Hebrew Israelites in scripture, the Israelites in scripture, Yahuwah's chosen people by the bloodline is a very great multitude. We were, we are a very great multitude of people, but because we have not heard his voice, because we cannot hear his voice, that this great multitude shall be turned into a small number among the nations. And so this is the reason why we're dying left and right. This is the reason why we're catching diseases left and right. This is the reason why for the mass extermination, this is the reason why, right? And we are mass exterminated and exploited in the lands in which we were scattered. We can't hear our heavenly father. Verse 30, for I knew that they would not hear me. See, he knew that we would not hear him. Why? Because of false religions, the false educational system, because of Hollywood, because of entertainment, because of, because of alcohol, because of drugs. 
because of sexual immorality. For I knew that they would not hear me because it is a stiff necked people. See, we don't listen. Black folk, us black folk, African Americans, we don't, we don't want to hear nothing. Anything that's going to edify us, anything that is going to judge us and correct us, we don't want to hear anything. We don't want to hear anything about a financial collapse. We don't want to hear anything about plagues. We, we don't want to hear anything about famine. We don't want to hear anything, all right, about staying home and studying and praying and fasting. Knowing who our Heavenly Father and our Savior is, we don't want to hear none of that. We, that's, we close our ears off to that. But as soon as it come time to turn up, as soon as it come time for a Rihanna concert, as soon as it come time to listen to Kanye West and Kim Kardashian, oh, all is open. Anytime, anytime or anytime that it is time to look at boxing, look at football, look at basketball, LeBron James, any of these teams, we, oh, we is open. Is open, mind open, eyes plugged, glued to the television screen. You understand what I'm saying? And so this is the reason why in these coming times, the Most High Yah, what does he have to do to us? What is going to wind up happening? It's not something that might happen. It's not something that maybe will happen. It's not something that, okay, we have a choice in. No, the Most High Yah has to, he has to cause two things. He has to cause two things that we've been relying on to be to be no to be scarce. He has to cause what we've been relying on to be scarce. What is that? I told you he has to tap the pockets. He got to tap. He got to tap his people's pockets. He got to tap the people's pockets and he got to tap their stomach. See, without no money and without no food, then maybe you'll start to hear him. And this is what he's going to have to do. But our people are so stiff necked. Our people are so hard headed. Our people are so egotistical. Our people are so vain. Our people are just so selfish, self-centered that they can't even hear the voice of the most high. They can't see brush fires and forest fires, wildfires happening. They can't see all of the depravity, the moral, the, the, the immorality, the sexual immorality and the, and the decadence of this country. They can't see any of that. Listen to what I'm saying, y'all. They cannot see the violence. They cannot see any of that. You understand? So, and, and so because they can't see any of that, things have to happen. So he's going to have to start shutting down the money supply. And then he's going to have to, then he's going to have to shut off the food. So if he shut the food off, and shut your means of getting food off. Oh, then maybe, then maybe people will, will take heed. People will hearken to his voice. But up until that time, the money keeps on rolling in and the food keeps on coming in and stores are still open. Malls are still open. Everything, stadiums are still open. Coliseums are still open. Businesses are still halfway open. If people don't even realize that black businesses are suffering. Why? Because because the economy, because of the economy and because the, and because the prices, because of inflation, hyperinflation, and because of the taxes, all right, keep going up on things, black businesses are suffering. And see, these multinational corporations, all of these, uh, these major manufacturers, they are all coming together as one conglomerate. And that is going to pretty much cause the black businesses to be non-existent. And it's actually starting right now. And so if our people don't understand that we need to come together, then we will, we, we're will we going to suffer. We're going to suffer majorly. And it's coming. So again, the most high has to cut off the food, famine, and he has to cut off the money. Hyperinflation caused the dollar, caused the financial system to collapse. So it's not just these people collapsing it. The most high Yah is allowing it to collapse so that his people can see him. So listen, he said, verse 30, he says, for I knew that you would not hear me because it is a stiff necked people. Black folk don't listen. But in the land of their captivities, where we are, where all the captivities that we've been through, we are here in our last one. We went through Egypt. We went through Assyria. We went to Babylon. We went to Persia. We went to Greece. Then in Rome in 70 AD. And then finally divided Rome, okay, which is. Europe, which is Europe, divided Rome, Europe, but this is the United States of America because, because the, because Europe 
The European Union owns the United States of America. So here, here we are in our last captivity. For I knew that they would not hear me because it is a stiff-necked people. But in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves. Okay, now what's happening? What is happening? We are remembering ourselves. We start, we're starting to remember ourselves. We're starting to remember who we are. In the land of our captivities, many of our people still don't know who we are. And the reason why we're going through all of this is because of sin. See, sin brought us to this place, brought us to this extent in the first place. This is the reason why it won't be any laws. There won't be any reparations for us. See, the reparations will cause more blinders. See, the reparations are going. See, the, it, it, see if we were to get reparations, do you know how further away that will pull us away from going to the most high? Why would he give us money now? Why would he allow a system that was meant to meant to correct and judge us by his hand? Why would he allow them to give us something? So that could be our savior. So that could be our foundation of peace. He said, ain't going to be no ain't going to be no reparations for y'all. Ain't gonna be no rights for y'all. This is the this is the reason why they every time we gain momentum, every time we go on an upward spiral, we keep coming back down. Why? Because we keep on relying on every source but him. We keep on relying on the judicial system. We keep on relying on on the political system. We keep on relying on false religions, false Christianity, namely one of them. We keep relying on bills and laws. We keep relying on NAACP. We keep relying on these false pastors and false apostles to give these false prophecies, right? All of these false prophets giving false prophecies. See, we keep relying on degrees, the educational system. We keep relying on everything but our heavenly father. And so that means that he that means that the the further degradation, the further incarceration, the further the further that means that the that means that there has to be a continuation of our struggle, a continuation of our exploitation. It has to be a continuation of our suffering, a continuation of our struggling until we get it. And then it says here, verse 31, and shall and 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 um and she'll know that I am Yahweh their Elohim, for I will give them in heart and ears to hear. See, he's given us a heart. He's given us a heart and ears to hear what's happening. See, we're hearing him. We're here. We're hearing his voice. Many of us are tuning out of the world. We're coming out of Babylon. We're coming out. And, and he has given what? Go out because he has taken our heart of stone and given us a heart of flesh. So we can hear him. So we could be soft. So we could be softened up for him. And ears to hear. So that we would no longer just be hearing, but we, we but we would be understanding. The problem is we're hearing, but we're not understanding. See, our people hear stuff, but they don't, they don't understand. See, our people are forever seeing, but never perceiving. And that's the problem. You see, they see what's happening, but they can't perceive it. Verse 32. And they shall praise me in the land of their captivity. What are we doing? And think upon my name. Did you get that? Verse 32. And they shall praise me in the land of their captivity. What are we doing? And thank upon my name. So we are thanking. We are thanking Yahuwah in our captivity. And we're thanking upon his name. His name is not God. His name is not Lord. His name is not Jesus. His name, our heavenly father's name is Yahuwah. And our Messiah and Savior's name is Yahushua HaMashiach. Verse 33, it says, and return there and return from their stiff neck and from their wicked deeds, for they shall remember the way of their fathers, which sin before Yahuwah Elohim. Verse 34, and I will bring them again into the land, which I promised with an oath unto their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and they shall be adonized of it. And I will increase them and they shall not be diminished. See, we talking end time. We talking in time. Once we inherit the promise, once we inherit the land that was promised to our forefathers, we will no longer be diminished. We can no longer be diminished after that. But we need to understand where, where we are. Now, we went from we went from Negroes to blacks to to African-Americans. 
We went from Hebrew Israelites to Negroes, to Blacks, to African Americans. All right? Now, when we were removed from our homeland, all right, when we were removed from our homeland, okay, which was located in Canaan, okay, in Ca Israel, Northern Africa, right? That's where we were. We were in Northern Africa. But then during the Roman, during the Roman invasion, during the Roman captivity in 70 AD, remember Titus had burnt the temple down. Many of our people were captured. Many of our people were burnt down in the temple. But then many of us to escape and flee from the Roman persecution, we, f we fled further deep down into Africa. Now, when we flee down, when we fled down deep into Africa, we escaped through Egypt and Ethiopia and we wound up in Negro land. Negro land is West Africa. Negro land is in between Zara Desert and Guinea, all right, which is the slave coast. Now, the slave coast is where the kingdom of Judah was. That is where we were picked up. That is where we were picked up from the Europeans. All right. That's where we were picked up. As a matter of fact, we were sold by the Africans. We were sold by the Canaanites to the Arabs and the Europeans. All right. Now, Negro land was on the map in 1417, but then in 1771, they took the map off. They took Negro land off. Why? Because Negro land would have identified, we would have identified with the people that came from that region. Okay. So our people today are still in Northwestern Africa, which is Algeria, the 10 tribes of Israel. Then we have our people in West Africa still, which are the Igbo tribes, the Igbo tribes. These are known as your Hebrew Israelite Jews. Now, this Zionist named Henry Kissinger had already located us and identified us as those people. All right. So now then we have the Limba tribes, which are deep down in South Africa. But the reason why we don't know any of this stuff is because those lands in Africa are still under the colonization of white supremacy. Now, normally under under normal circumstances, these nations, these lands, OK, these continents in Africa, these countries in Africa will be able to sustain themselves off, off of the natural resources under normal circumstances. These regions in Africa will be able to sustain themselves off of the natural resources. But then because of the colonization of white supremacy, this is the reason why these these the people are poor. So the lands aren't poor, but the people are poor. But then now China has now followed the footsteps of the Europeans. And now they are over there subjugating that land and dominating that land and have our people over there working for less than minimum wage. All right. OK, so this is what's happening. In fact, in fact, Christianity was a way of being forced over there on our people under African corrupt leadership as they take the payouts for keeping our people enslaved over there. In Christianity and Judaism. This is the reason why the Roman Catholic Church over there in Africa flourishes so much. This is the reason why many of them are still on Jesus. White Jesus. And they still bowing down to the white Jesus on the cross. Why? Because Christianity was forced over there on them. And so was Judaism. So many of our people are Hebrew Israelite Christians over there in Africa. And they are in Judaism. Now. In West Africa and South Africa, those are Bantu-speaking tribes. They speak a, lang a language called Bantu. These are your Bantu-speaking tribes. Now, down in South Africa, these are your Limba tribes. These are the ones who said that they descended from seven Jewish men 2,500 years ago. Now, Limba means to refrain. Limba means to refrain, meaning that our meaning that our brothers down there, our brothers and sisters down there in, in South Africa, they refrain from eating 
from from eating outside of the dietary laws. So they don't eat outside of the dietary laws and they do not marry outside of their race. The Limba tribes down there in South Africa is like 70 to 80,000 of them down there. As a matter of fact, they still, they're the ones that are, they use that Jewish, they use that Jewish star, that six pointed hexagram, that same star that King Solomon used, they use that on their gravestones. You understand what I'm saying? So we have our people, the Hebrew Israelite, uh, Jews, the Igbo tribes known as the Igbo Jews, known as the Igbo Jews. Now, these are part of the 10 tribes, part of the Igbo, uh, the Igbo, the Igbo tribes. They are scattered too. part of the Igbo tribes are scattered too. All right. Now. In Nigeria is where these Western Jews are. OK, the real the. The, the, the real Jews, the pure blood, they're still down there in that area. But it's Christianity and Judaism for them. Why? Because Roman Catholicism owns that down there. You understand? And so this is the reason why either our people are over there in Christianity or Judaism. But of the bloodline, those are our people still down there. Now, if you were to get your haplo group done which is your deep ancestry your deep ancestry is your haplo group okay that's your deep ancestry now your deep ancestry would read a e1b1a so all of those people so all of our people down there that are in west africa down there in nigeria in that region those are the ones who have the bloodline of an e1b1a now down there in south africa those are the limba tribes they have an E1B1A, but then they also have a sub-haplo group of the haplo group E1B1A, which is EM180. Now, EM180 is said to be a bloodline from Aaron's bloodline. These are your Levites. So that's Aaron's and Moses' bloodline. The EM180, those are your Limba tribes. So you have the Limba tribes. And then you have, then you have the West African Igbo tribe. Both of those are Bantu speaking tribes. Both of those are Bantu speaking tribes. The Limba tribes and the West and the Western African Jews, the Igbo tribes. All right. Now. So this is the reason why, again, Christianity flourishes so much. Why? The colonization of the Europeans and paying corrupt African leaders to keep our people down there under their hand and, and to receive payouts. All right. Um, so here we go. Now we are here in the United States of America, right? Now we know that in 18, in 1863 was supposed to be the Emancipation Proclamation, right? Which was supposed to have freed the slaves. Now we know in 1861 to 1865 was the Civil War. That was brother against brother to keep us in slavery. But we see that that didn't work. It was to keep us in slavery, but it was also to keep the union. It was to keep the union because if they did not keep the United States un unified, that would have meant two nations in one. That would have been the northern states and then that would have been the southern states. Well, see, the northern states had already slaved us out. So the southern states wanted to continue to use us in slavery because remember, up north was the textile work and down south was the agriculture work. It was the agriculture. So they wanted to further keep us enslaved down in the south. But that again, that would have meant two nations. But Abraham Lincoln wanted to save the union. He didn't care anything about the slaves. So you talking 600,000 brothers up for killing one another just to keep us. In servitude, you get what I'm saying. Now, in eight, now, 
the Emancipation Proclamation in 1863 was supposed to have freed us, but it did not. We didn't wind up getting free, so-called free, until two years later, which was in 1865. Now, in 1865, we still did not receive what we was promised by the Emancipation Proclamation, which was the 40 acres and the mule. 40 acres and the mule, we never received that. All we received was these pagan holidays that we that they had thrown that they had that they, that they had thrown upon us. Remember, because Christmas became legal in 1870. So that's all we had gotten. Now, because we did not receive any land, we did not receive any 40 acres, no 40 acres in the mill after we were freed, what happened? We that meant that the only way we could survive was to go out and to try to try to sustain ourselves. So that means that we would have to go out and we would have to find work. We would have to make our own living. We would have to try to find our own resources. And because we did not have anything to start off with after slavery, that meant that we would have to make our way by stealing, by taking. And so what happened was that had set back, that was set, that had set back many of us who were freed from these plantations right back to the same oppressors that we were so-called free from because we could not sustain ourselves. All right. So now you have 1865. So between 1865 and 1877, this is when you start to have the black codes. These were the black codes from 1865 to 1877. This period was called Reconstruction. Reconstruction was supposed to have been a time when the when America was was healing itself, it was being rejuvenated. This was the times that this was during the period of time that the blacks were supposed to have received something and the union was coming back together and this was the repairing of the breach based upon what the Civil War had done, right? But now from 1865 to 1877, what do we get? We get what we had received, what you call the Civil War, the Civil War amendments. That was the three, that was the three amendments, the Amendment 13, Amendment 14, and, a, and, a, and Amendment 15. Now, Amendment 13 was to abolish slavery, but Amendment 13 never abolished slavery. Why? Because all we had to do was go out and commit a crime and there goes your abolishment of slavery because Amendment 13 says abolishment or the abolishing of slavery except punishment for a crime. So that meant that we would be getting locked up for petty offenses because we could not sustain ourselves because we didn't receive any land. We didn't receive any money. See what I'm saying? So basically amendment 13 was a way of really putting us back in slavery because all we had to do was commit a crime or a petty offense that would send us back into servitude. See, so amendment 13 never abolished slavery. That's what the prison industrial complex system is for. It's for slavery. All right. Now amendment 14 was citizenship. Amendment 14 was the right to be a citizen, a right to citizenship, right? But then Amendment 15 was the right to vote. But you see, we didn't really even get the right to vote then. Why? Because we had the hoods. We had the KKK. They came into play. That's how the Democrats came in. That's the Democratic Party, right? So, but because of them, we were lynched, we were raped, we were burnt on crosses. Our neighborhoods were subjugated destroy. And so these black codes restricted us even more because we couldn't get jobs. We couldn't get jobs that would sustain us with enough money that would pay us for, for us to be able to survive. And if we did get jobs, we could not get fired. See what I'm saying? So all of these things happened underneath these black codes. So now we didn't even get the right to vote until 1965. So when you look at 1865 to 1877 and you say that's reconstruction, how could that be reconstruction when we received black codes that further restricted black folk from being able to do what they needed to do to sustain themselves and their families? All right. Then you take it from 1877 to 1965. I would even say, so you're talking 100 years, 99 to 100 years of Jim Crow, right? 
which were actual, which were further, which were laws to further enslave us. This was racism. This was anti, this was anti-race. You got You got to get what I'm saying. This is pro-racism, pro-racism, anti-integration, anti-integration, pro-racism, the Jim Crow laws. This is what separated blacks and whites from being able to do anything together. This is when we were considered second class citizens. You understand? We were considered second class citizens. This is, and we were already looked at as three fifths of a human. And so, us being three fifths or being labeled three fifths of a human, that would justify us getting slaved out and killed even more or being incarcerated even more for petty offenses. Why? Because we were three fifths of a human. So, if we're not all the way human or all the way free in their eyes, then guess what? Why? Because to them, we're not even citizens. Really? We're still not even citizens. See, and so because, so guess what? We're really not citizens and we're not even immigrants. We are imports. We were brought over here involuntary, involuntarily. We were brought over here to this country involuntarily in chains. So if we were brought to a country forcefully, okay, involuntarily, how are we immigrants? How are we, how, how, how are we citizens? All right. Now, let's go, let, let, let's go further. Can we go further? In 1712, you already know that we were under a set of laws or a code of conduct that was contrived by Willie Lynch. Now, anybody that, if you know anything about the Willie Lynch, the Willie Lynch letter was a letter to all of the slave owners teaching them how to conduct slaves, how to treat slaves, how to manage slaves. That was the Willie Lynch letter. Now, this Willie Lynch letter now, well, this Willie Lynch letter formed into a mentality that we're still up under today. See, we all have this Willie Lynch, this Willie Lynch mentality. Yeah. Now, in 1712, Willie Lynch wrote a letter to all of the slave masters and slave owners and said that if you separate black folk by skin tone, you could rule over them for 300 years. And so this is the reason why today we are still at each other's throat. This is the reason why today we are still at each other's neck. This is the reason why we're still envious and jealous of one another. This is the reason why we have the crab bucket mentality still. This is the reason why we still have the house Negro and the field Negro mentality. This is the reason why in our households where we have black families, this is the reason why either the woman is the head of the family or the man is not even there. Come on, y'all. The man's not there. Or if the man's present, the woman is over the family. Now, the reason why that is, is because of conditioning. See, during slavery, you have to realize that when the black, when our black men got out of line, they would take the strongest slaves. And what they would do is they would get together, the oppressors, the European colonizers, they would get together and they would sodomize black men. They would get the strongest black men and they would get their families and they would get all of their friends and everybody to come around, their wives, children, everybody to come and watch our black men get sodomized. And that would be, that would be a warning to any other slaves that if you ever rose up, this is what would happen to you. And this is the same thing that we have today in the educational system. This is what we have today in entertainment. This is what we have today in religion. This is what we have today in politics. This is what we have all over the United States of America, because they still got that Willie Lynch mentality. They still remember what would be done to them if they ever rose up. And so we still have that slave master and we that oppressor slave master and that slave mentality today in the United States of America today. We stay, it's still here. 
And that's the reason why people can't learn. This is the reason why people can't get edified. This is the reason why people walk around stuck on stupid. This is the reason why people all we want to do is buy Jordans. This is the reason why people all we want to do is chase the bag, chase money. All we want to do is have premarital sex. All we want to do is go out and have one night stands. All we want to do is turn up and party and dance on the pole and strip on the pole. All we want to do is watch football. All we want to do is sit down, eat, get full. That's all we want to do. That's it. That's that's all we want to do. All right. And so um, this is what we have today. And so this Willie Lynch mentality, this is what happened. And so because and so because the women, our women had to see our black men get sodomized and be humiliated like that. What that did was it gave the woman an independent mind. So when she would have a boy, when she birthed boys, she was she was bred and she was trained and programmed to protect the little boys, but to treat the women, treat the little girls how to be independent like her. Because after she saw her man, after she saw her husband get sodomized like that, that had lowered the morality or lowered the morale of our women. That that took away her trust of a black man being able to protect her and provide for her. See what I'm saying? So when she would have little boys and little girls, she would treat the little boy like a little girl. She would protect the little boy, but then she would treat the little girl how to grow up and be independent and fierce just like her. You got to get what I'm saying. And so this is what we have in the households today. We have we have black households. The black man still there, but the black household is dominated by the black woman. As a matter of fact, when couples go out, when a black man and a black woman goes out, you'll have people address the woman, but not address the man. Why? Because of this slave mentality, this Willie Lynch mentality. This is the reason why, this is the reason why you don't see anybody speak out on nothing. Why? Why, why don't you see any black leaders? Why? Why they don't speak this? Why they don't talk about this in church? This is the reason why black men don't like church. That's the reason why they don't sit up in church. That's why they don't, it's systematically done that way. They know, they know a black man don't want to sit up in no Christian, in no Christian church to hear no black man talk about no white Jesus. They know that. But they know that the woman, the black woman will fund the black churches. See, they, they know that. Why? Because the black woman is trained to hear something that will get her ahead. She's trained to hear a prophecy, trained to hear something that sounds good to her ear. See, that's the, that's the serpent. That's the serpent frequency right there. So listen, so these churches, these Christian churches, these are temples headed by the serpent because the serpent is trained to tell the woman, the serpent within these pastors are trained to teach the woman and tell the woman what she wants to hear while the man don't step up. Did you get that? So we have a whole, so we have thousands and millions of Adams out here and we have thousands and millions of Eves sitting in the church being spoken to by the serpent. Get, get what I'm saying? Okay. Now, let's kind of rewind. On May 10th, May 10th, 1740, they came up with the Negro Act in South Carolina. This was a Negro Act. Now, this Negro Act was put in play, was, was put in play, put in place to further degrade black folk. This Negro Act was put in place to keep us from being able to learn how to read. We could not grow food. We could not earn money. We could not assemble in groups. And also it gave slave owners the legal right to kill us and to lynch us and torture us if we ever became rebellious. So you see today that same enforcement is still, is still being lived out and played out today still being played out today. See, now 
We have in from 1910, from around 1910, I'm going to say from around 1910 to 1960, you had what you call the Great Migration. This was the Great Migration, okay? This is when, you know, at first we were on the plantations. We were on the plantations. We were dealing with the fields, right? Now, listen, they moved us away from the field. They took us away from the agriculture. They took us away from dealing with land. And the reason why they did that was because if they kept us dead, then we would not even need anyone to rule over us. We would not have to go to the oppressor for us to be able to sustain our families and take care of ourselves. Why? Because we were already doing that in slavery anyway. So what did they do in the great migration period, which was from 1910 to 1960? What did they do? They took us from the South and they brought us up North. They brought us up North because during World War I, many of the Europeans were going out to war. And so their factories up north were suffering, meaning that you're talking about steel mill factories and you're talking about railroad workers. They needed a lot of them by the millions. So what they did was they paid, they paid black, they paid black folk to come up north, take them away from the plantations, take them away from the fields to come up north where we would have to where we would have to labor in these slow skilled trades, the same trades, the same skilled trades that they will pay European and white supremacy top dollar. We would have to take the bottom of the low paying scale in order to operate up north. All right. So once they had taken us from the south and moved us up north and guess what? They so-called moved us up north and then these oppressors, these English traders, Right. White supremacy. They decided that they would go out in the field and do what we did. And this is how they was catching skin cancer out there trying to be out in the field. See, we was trained to be out in the field because you see melanin. Right. So we could be out in the field and take the sun. But they so-called were so greedy. They wanted to push up, push us up north. Now, when they pushed us up north, we stayed in the same communities, in the same suburbs that the white folk was in, that the same Europeans lived in. Right. But when they went off the wall, we we started to live where they were now. So basically, the European culture, the European nation, they moved into better places to live. While we stayed where they used to stay. And so the landlords, they let the properties go down. This is what helped create the ghetto. So if you ever want to know what helped create the ghettos of these impoverished neighborhoods, in these suburban, in these urban communities, that's what did it. That's what did it. They took us from the south. Now, there were some of our people who were fortunate enough to have land down there. They had land and they and they had resources down in the south. But you already know they were still under, hand, under the hand of white supremacy. So it really wasn't too much that they could do even then. But again, when they moved us up north, they moved us in the same places that the Europeans had before they went to war. Right now, when they came back from the war, what happened? We lost our jobs. We already were paying, we were already getting paid low wages. And this, and so because we could, we could, we could not bear, we couldn't barely, meaning that we could barely take care of ourselves and keep up the property and keep ourselves in these places. That means that the landlord, they let the places go down that created the ghetto. And then when these, then when the Europeans came back from war, we were lost without a job. We didn't have no jobs. Why? Because they came back from war and that pushed us out. And so this is where you had the, the ghettos and you had these impoverished neighborhoods created. Okay. Now, now let's go here. Let's go here. In 1934, 1934, a term called redlining was established by the Federal Housing Authority in 1934. Okay. Redlining was a way of putting a red line on the maps where low-income black families lived. Now, redlining was a way of keeping us from being able to obtain home loans to live a better life because we were deemed a poor financial risk. And so that was what redlining was because everything was color coded. 
Okay, you had you had red, you had you had green, you had blue, you had yellow, and you had red. If you was in the red line, we were the we were the low income black families that were impoverished, and so this is what kept us from being able to get insurance and home loans and things of that nature, so we could not move up. And so these sub these subsidized builders would come in and they would build for white folk, they would build for Europeans. And with the, at the promise or with the promise that black folk were not privileged to have the same type of homes that the Europeans could have. And that, cre and that further created the ghetto. So you see how every step of the way we were always kept back. We were always left back. We were always left back under the radar. So that's 1934. Now. In 1960, in the 1960s, you have what you call gentrification. Now, you know what gentrification is. Gentrification is when a is when a property value in a certain area is brought down because of drugs, crime, prostitution, gang violence and shooting. Now, what will happen is. OK, and that would lower the property value. But then you would have these subsidized builders to come in. And then they would raise the property value. They would push the people out and then they would sell it at a profit. That, that was gentrification. You have that today still. You have that today still. And so all of now. Y'all need to get this. The reason why all of this has happened to us is because of sin. See, Judah still don't get it. J Judah still don't understand the reason why we are still under the hand of the oppressor. See, we still don't understand that. And the reason why people don't pay attention to this is because they got a few extra dollars. They got a little title. They got a little position. They have a little power. They have a little influence. But guess what? It's all at the expense of their moral code because they had to sell out to get it. See, if you want to sit up there in the white corporate world right next to white supremacy, where well, you already know in order for you to sit where they sit, then that means that you got to sell out your own people. <clears throat> you got to sell out your own people. And so these are called your house Negroes. These are your house Negroes while the field Negroes are still living on minimum wage. The field Negroes are still out on the corner on the dope stroll selling dope to their own community. The field, the, come on, y'all. The field Negroes are still out there working two and three jobs. The field Negroes are still out there side cutting. The field Negroes are out there scamming and scheming and seeing what they can do to survive. See? Where the house Negroes, they get the better places. See, it's just like in slavery. Just like in slavery. See, the house Negroes, they were the ones to go back and tell the slave master when the people out in the field were acting up. If the people out in the field were coming together and thinking of a plan to try to escape the tyranny and try to escape the oppressor, well, you see, the, the, the house Negro would go back to tell the slave master, the oppressor, well, you know, master, you know what they doing out there? They, they plotting on trying to get up out of here. Well, see, that's the same thing today in the corporate world. That's the same thing today. You know. So the house Negro, he still, see, he, he eats better. He dresses better. He eats better. See, he gets the ham sandwich. We get the pig feet in the hog malls. Y'all got to get what I'm saying. See, while it's cold outside, the house Negro get heat. We got to be out in the cold. See? So, the house Negro is, is still a Negro. It's still a Negro. Don't matter. It's just that he get better privileges because of his allegiance to the oppressor for selling out his own people. And we have that 
today in every sector of life. What do you think the Freemasons and the Boule and the Prince Hall Freemasons and all, what do you think that's for? These are the gatekeepers to keep white supremacies and white interests up top while keeping the black man down. And so you got to realize something that these gatekeepers work as guilds, meaning they have the keys to corporate America. They have the keys to the corporate ladder. So that means that in order for you to get where they are, it's not that you can't work hard to get there. See, we used to think that if you just believe in yourself, if you go to school, if you get degrees, then you good and you could get wherever you want to go. But no, that's not necessarily true. In order for you to land certain positions in white corporate America, you got to play the game. That means that you got to get the okay to come up top. So that means you got to be screened through secret societies in order to move up top. Because in order for you to be a house Negro, you got to do what they want you to do. You got to say what they want you to say. You got to preach how they want you to preach. You got to dress how they want you to dress. Come on. And so this is the reason why our people don't know who they are. This is the reason why our people idolize Jay-Z and Beyonce. This is the reason why our people idolize Rihanna and Drake. This is the reason why our people idolize Lil Wayne. This is the reason why our, 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 our people idolize LeBron James. This is the reason why. Because they don't know who they are as a people. We don't know who we are. Yet and still, we're the ones singing and dancing for the oppressor, singing in a strange land. Come on. Singing and dancing, twerking, entertaining for the oppressor. That's what we're doing. We're entertaining for the slave master. Just like we had to do this in, when we was in slavery. We still enslaved, still. But I'm talking about what we had to do in the 18th century. In the 18th and the 19th century. Hucking and bucking and dancing on the plantation to entertain the slave master. Where it's the same day in the churches. This is the reason why our black pastors don't preach a lick of word. Why is that? Because they have been trained by white theologians in these white seminaries. They have been trained by them to preach. To preach in such a way that it keeps the people inoculated. And keep the people entertainment minded and entertainment driven. And this is the reason why our people still sitting in these institutions of indoctrination and Christianity. This false pagan religion still calling on white Jesus and don't realize that's not his name. And they don't even know that they're not Gentiles. Our black people still don't know by the bloodline, you ain't a Gentile. They still don't know that. Why? Because these, these pastors still have the Willie Lynch mentality. Get what I'm saying. It's for the payout. You see, they got to take the payout from the bail system. The bail system has the payout. And because the payout is so good, it keeps the people sleep. And so the goal for religion, especially Christianity, was for the white theologians to teach that white folk were superior to black folk and that white folk were royalty and that they were the only ones to make it in heaven. While black folk were cursed and they were going to hell and they will always be servants. And that God was OK with racism. This is what they taught. This is what they taught. You got it. You, 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 you get what I'm saying. As a matter of fact, you must realize in the 17th, in the 18th and the 19th century, many of these churches, they were, I told you these were free. These were Masonic temples. These were Freemason temples. This is the reason why they, pre why? And so this slave preacher, this slave preacher had to preach in such a way that it would keep the slave master entertained. And so the slave master would sit outside the church or he would sit in the congregation and he would make sure that that slave preacher was preaching what he wanted to hear. And it would keep our people asleep. 
And they preach that same way today. These were slave temples. These were slave Masonic temples that our, our ancestors were preaching. But guess what? You still have that, 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 that our ancestors who were slaves were preaching these temples. But it's the same thing today. What do you have with the Christian church? What do you have today? You have these same slave preachers on the pulpit in Masonic temples, the Christian churches, preaching the same thing that the slave master want to hear. But the people are asleep. The people are still slaves. The people are still in shackles. And all they want to hear is Jesus. And we don't even realize that under the papal bull of 1452, that is what kept us in slavery under Christianity. What is a papal bull? A papal bull is a decree or an edict made by the Pope. It was a letter, a decree, or an edict made by the Pope. And that is what that edict, that decree, that papal bull of 1452 kept us in perpetual slavery under Christianity. Same thing today. This is the reason why people can't come up out from under the mental and the religious inoculation. This is the reason why they can't come out from up under that. See? See? All right. Okay, okay, okay. All right. And so you had gentrification to happen, right? Had gentrification to happen. But then you remember with the whole Ronald Reagan and the Contra, all right? And, and, and the Oliver North. That brought crack to the black neighborhoods in the United States of America. And so the crack that was brought to the black families in the black communities, what it did was it funded the Contras. But what it was, was to eradicate and exterminate black life. And so remember the crack in the 80s when the crack epidemic hit, it was to fill up the prison. It was to fill up the prison industrial complex system. And this is where rap, this is where gangster rap came in in the late 80s and started to propagate all the drugs in the community. See, it turned from this New York rap. See, it turned from the East Coast rap. It turned from, it went from KRS-One, Big Daddy Kane, LL Cool J. See, it went from that and then it went to MC8. It went to NWA. It went to Ice-T. It went to all of them. Now, why did they do that? Why? Because it was a way of continuing Continuing to propagate drugs and prostitution and crime and gang violence in the neighborhoods, and it would keep crack selling. It would keep it would keep crack babies being born. And so our black men were going to prison for selling dope, for selling crack. But then also you had mothers, okay, birthing crack babies, and they were also going to prison. Because you had black, listen, you had black men, they were selling crack to their own women. They were selling crack to their own mothers, own grandmothers. This is how they would maintain the communities because they were locked out of society. So this is what we have today still. We are still up under the hand. Oh, don't worry, y'all. I'm going to get to some scripture, but we got to hear this. We, 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 and, and, then, and then I'm going to give y'all some scripture so y'all can hit, so y'all can see through scripture, through the Bible, what I'm talking about. See, all of these black history books that were disseminated throughout the world, throughout the United States of America from these educational indoctrinational institutions. See, these were brainwashing books. These were the ones that washed our brains up and kept us dumb and kept us stupid and kept us walking around like robots program. See, you got to realize something. So this is the reason why people don't want to hear nothing. Why? Because they so used to being entertained. They so used to being stuck on stupid. So they can't get this. But we need to deal with this because this is a disease. This is a disease in our community still today. 
So much so that our people don't even want to hear it, no matter how bad it's getting. It's steadily getting worse, and yet it seems like the more they keep closing their ears, the more they keep closing their eyes. And we don't realize that Jacob's trouble is on the horizon. We don't see that. We don't see that it's really already started. We don't see that. And then in the 90s, the three strike law came under Bill Clinton and your boy Biden. The three strike law came. They gave us 25 to life sentence, sentences off of the same drugs that they propagated, the same drugs that they shipped over here in the 80s. We were getting locked up for it. As a matter of fact, some of our brothers, uncles and, 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 and fathers and grandfathers and cousins, they still suffered off of that three strike law that was put in place in the 90s. See? And where you was giving white boys two to five years and you was giving them probation for white powder cocaine, you was slapping the book on the black folk, on the black man's head for 25 to life for crack cocaine. You, you dig what I'm saying? This is what was happening. They was throwing the book at us. I'm talking about, I remember doing it in the 90s. When they, I remember in the '90s when, 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 when young dudes my age was selling it, and they was going to jail for the summer. They was going to jail for five years, five and ten years. You talking about their whole, they, you talking about their whole teenage life was spent in prison because of the three strike law. This was already their third offense by the time they were seventeen. By the time they were seventeen, this was their third offense. Three strikes. And it's still happening. That's right. And it's still happening. Still happening right now today. Can I keep going? Okay. Let's go um let, let's go to Deuteronomy. Let's go to Deuteronomy. You see? But guess what's happening now? But see what's happening now is see the European nations, the white supremacy, now they are being affected by this opioid by this heroin and this opioid uh, addiction. See, now now drugs are hitting their community and they're keeping it under wraps. See, when we was doing it and we were, well, see, when we were being turned out on a massive scale, when we were being turned out on a massive scale and when we were being incarcerated at a high rate, when we were shooting each other down for it, oh, we would have faced a degradation then. We would have faced for everything wrong with the American society. But as soon as the opioid and the and the heroin crisis hit day people, we don't hear nothing about it. We don't hear nothing about little Billy on meth with two teeth in his mouth on welfare. See, we don't hear about that. But as soon as we do it, they put us right on the screen. See, but no, we got to talk about this. We got to deal with it. See, this is for our people to know what happened. See, our people need to know what happened. So black folk ain't going to be no reparations. You need to, you need to, you need to get your life. You need to get your lives aligned with the most high. Yah. If you ever want to know who you are, if you ever want to be empowered, if you ever want deliverance, if you ever want any type of healing, you need to get yourself acquainted and get yourself connected and get yourself in the hands of the Most High Yah. He's the only way through this. He's the only way you going to ever know who you are, where you came from, where you are, where you going. Other than that, you're going to be lost. You're going to be lost. 
I mean, you're going to be lost. All right. Let's go to Deuteronomy. Let's go to Deuteronomy. Excuse me, let's go, let's go to do the let's go to Deuteronomy. See? Christian churches all I mean all turned out. It's a social club now. It's a place you go to to flaunt what you have. It's a place to go there just to cry. Just to cry forgiveness, but have no real inner heart change. Have no deep heart inner change. Do not plan on repenting. Do not plan on turning away from sin. It's just a place to go there and cry on the altar. That's all. It's just a place to go there to hear that you're going to have you a nice house and a nice car. And you're going to meet you your dream spouse. That's all. It's just a place to go and fake for people that you don't like. That's all. It's just a place to go and hear your black pastor who's in the Greek fraternity who did already sold out to white supremacy to teach you a false word. That's all. That's all everything is. It's a fake. It's a phony. It's a hoax. It's to keep you turning. It's to keep you distracted. It's to keep you weak. It's to keep you inoculated. It's to keep you indoctrinated. It's to keep you dead. That's what it's for. It's to keep you chasing after the exploits of the world without you ever realizing you never received anything. So much so you don't even realize that police genocide is still being enforced. By the by the by those who are sitting up top of law enforcement. Y'all don't know. See, people don't know that. The slave patrol of 1704, which gained immunity in 1750, meaning that they gained immunity from being charged for killing black folk. The slave patrol. The slave patrol is still on duty today for you Negroes who don't want to listen. Oh, you Negroes want to be gangsters still? Y'all still want to be gangsters and thugs with your simple selves? You heathens? Okay, well, let the slave patrol of 1704 who gained immunity from being charged for killing your black behinds in 1750, let them get you since y'all don't want to listen. Let them get you. See, we sitting here getting ready to start fighting full-fledged demons and y'all still worrying about being Tony Montana. Tony Montana. You still worrying about being Bishop on Juice. You still worrying about you still worrying about being old dog and you about to start facing you some demons. Still got the gangster and the thug mentality and look, look how far along we are now. A new world order is upon us. Where this whole system is getting ready to be changed. Where you gonna have to change, where you gonna have to choose between the most high y'all or eating. And y'all still talking about, I'm a pimp, I'm a Mac, I'm a gangster. Y'all so simple. See our black folks simple. Our black brothers, they simple. Then you got our young black women still in the mirror, still taking selfies, still with their little eyelashes and their little hair, combing their hair for five minutes. Get your hot tail off of this daggone line and go sit yourself down somewhere. And then you wonder why it ain't no good brothers out here. That's why. Because you, you keep taking off your clothes on camera. Because you keep shaking your nasty behind and twerking on camera, online. So you got to realize something. Social media, 
technology was used for two purposes. It was to wake, it was for the most high y'all to wake his people up. And it was for Satan to use his, use his people for his own purposes. And that's what's happening. So even there's separation on social media. There's a separation in technology. It's for the further degradation and exploitation of our black men and women and for the edification and the unification and healing and deliverance and empowerment for the saints, for the saints of the Most High Yah. Who's trying to warn those still in the world to come on, y'all. Don't you see what they doing? See, now the degradation is out in full display now. See, it's no longer hiding in your house. All of your shame and your guilt and your condemnation and your nakedness is being shown for the whole world to see. And you don't even realize that you just a pawn in Satan's plan in his game. You don't even see that. Y'all still coming on making little hour videos, sitting there smoking, drinking, and cussing, and talking about the world. Who cares? Them celebrities ain't paying you. You giving them free. You you giving them free promotion. You promoting them for free. You giving them free airtime. Social media should be used to edify our people, teach our people, to cause our people to self-reflect. But instead of that, they are losing self-respect and they are self-destructing. That's what they're doing. That's what they're doing. That's exactly what they're doing. And that's why I said, see, our people ain't going to see till it ain't no more lights. See, until it ain't no more, see, see, until there's no more technology, until there's no more money to, to come on now. See, that's the problem. That's the problem. The reason why you want money so much is so you can keep buying your sin. You want to keep funding your sin and your pleasure. That's the only reason why you, you fools keep chasing money because you want to buy yourself more into self-destruction. You want to continue to drape yourselves in more luxury, more pleasure, open yourselves up for more demonic oppression. That's why y'all on pills now. That's why y'all on pills now. That's the reason why every time you turn around, you got a problem. That's the reason why you got all of these wounds. You got all of these skeletons in your closet and ain't none, and ain't near one of them being addressed. Ain't near one of them being talked about. You got all of these traumas, all of this unforgiveness in your heart, all of this unrepentance. You got all of these nightmares. You come on, come on. All of these idiosyncrasies, all of these insecurities. You got all of these hangups. And the reason why you do is because you don't realize that our most high Yah is waiting on you to call on him, waiting on you to turn to him, waiting on you to repent, waiting on you to turn from your waiting on you to call on him, waiting on you to turn to him, waiting on you to repent, waiting on you to turn from your wicked ways. So y'all don't realize that. All right, let's go to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Let's go there. See, this is what's wrong with us. You think they want to hear this? You think they want to hear this? Oh, Black Lives Matter. Got Black Lives Matter hats on, bumper stickers. Y'all fools don't care about no black lives. Cause you keep you you're jealous of one another. You jealous, you jealous of your cousin, you jealous of your friend. You hate yourself. You hate yourself. That's why you want to look like the Europeans. That's why you want to look like every nation. That's why. That's why you want to be like the superstars, because you hate you. You hate yourself. 
And the reason why you hate yourself is because you believed in the narrative that was fed to you. You failed to look in the scripture. You failed to get in the word of the most high Yah so he could tell you who you are through his word, through the spirit. Y'all don't want that part. That Y'all don't want that. Y'all know what you want. You want yoga. That's what you want. That's what you want. You want your third eye. You want to be your own God. That's what you want to do. You want to be witches and wizards and warlocks. You want to be Freemasons. You want to be whores, pimps, thugs, and gangsters. That's what y'all want to be. You want to be Cardi B. That's who you want to be. You want to be Nicki Minaj. You want to be a Barbie. That's what you want to be. That's what you want to be. You don't want to be a royal priesthood. You don't want that. You don't want righteousness, holiness, purity, innocence. You don't want that. You don't want that. You don't want self-control. You don't want real joy and real peace. You don't want that. You want to live like heathens. That's what you want. You want to do what you want to do. You want to live your life accordance to your own rules. That's what you want to do. And want to keep wondering why you can't never get ahead. That's, that's, what, that's, that's what you want to do. You want to keep tatting up your body every time you go through a traumatic experience. You want to keep putting a new, a, a, a new circumstance and a new trial on your body, opening yourselves up for more demons to take over. That's what you want to do. Thanking you cool because you got all these tattoos. Thanking you the one. And you don't realize you got bail all over you. Don't you know that demons are marked up? You're making yourself look like a full-fledged demon so that when demons start coming around, you will examine and identify with the demons. Oh, y'all. That's what's wrong with you. That's what's wrong with you. You don't want to be set apart. You want to blend in with the crowd. You don't want to be different. You want to be the same. You want to be the same as everybody else. You want to dress the same, talk the same, drink the same, eat the same. You, you, that's what you want to do. You don't want to be different. You don't want to be set apart. Now, you don't want that. You don't want to get married and have a ministry. Your home, your marriage being your first ministry. Now, you don't want that. You want to get married as a business deal. And they want to know why in six months in, y'all getting a divorce. See, you want to get married for sex and looks. That's what you want to get married for. Sex, looks, and money. Sex, looks, and money. Sex, looks, and money. That's what you want to get married for. And that's why black women... That's the reason why they are the last married and the first divorced. That's why. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. You brothers, y'all keep th black our black men, they keep thinking with their head in their pants. See? They got five and six baby mamas and 10 kids. Can't take care of near one of them. Don't care about near one of them. See? That's, that's what they want. And then turn around and blame society. It was because my mommy and my daddy. See, if my mommy would have helped me and loved me, I wouldn't have been like this, man. When you going to grow up and take responsibility for your own issues? When you going to do that? See, this is the problem with us. We don't know who we are. See? Here we go. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 36. Yep. As a matter of fact, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do. I'm gonna do let, let, let's go to Deuteronomy because I want to show y'all something. I want to show y'all something. And the only time black preachers go to Deuteronomy is when they cover the blessings. 
They don't even realize our people are still up under the curses of Deuteronomy 28. Black people, black people, black folk, black people, uh, come on, black folk, African Americans from the transatlantic slave trade. We are the ones of Deuteronomy chapter 28. We did not fall up under the blessings. Why? Because we didn't keep the law. See, black pastors, these black coon preachers, trained, see, seminary trained, cemetery brainwashed, still on white Jesus in the cross, in Christian, Christmas, Easter, see, they talk about being the head and not the tail. No, we the tail. We ain't the head. We ain't the head of nothing. We can't even be the head of our own households. How we the head of something? But you black pastors, y'all going to pay for this. Y'all going to pay. Yeah, let me, I'm going to say it. All of you black pastors in these Christian churches around America not teaching our people who they are, you going to pay. You going to pay for propagating this cross. You going to pay for propagating this white Jesus. You going to pay. You going to pay for continuing to be in this Freemasonry after you, after you receive the knowledge and truth. After you could go right on your phone and type it in. Y'all going to pay for this here. Oh, y'all going to pay. Let, let me tell you. I'm Y'all going to pay for this. You taking money and payouts and living good lives while your people are suffering in sin. Y'all still suffering too, but y'all hiding behind the pulpit, hiding behind tithes and offering, and the people ain't getting edified. Oh, y'all going to pay for this. You all going to pay for this. You got um you got up and coming prophets that the most high y'all's raising up to teach you pastors that been preaching in Christianity with your seminary degree of indoctrination for 10, 15, 20 years, but you won't listen to them. You won't listen to the true prophetic voices being raised up by the most high y'all to tell to, to correct you because you too prideful with your degrees to strip off that old false knowledge you got. Oh, you don't want to do that? Oh, y'all going to pay for this. Yes, sir. Oh, yes. Yeah, y'all going to pay. Y'all going to pay for this. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 28. Because I won't let, let y'all hear this. Let, let, listen, listen, listen. Let, let, let's go to... Twenty-eight. I'm gonna read all the curses. I'm, I'm gonna read the blessing. Let's read blessing. Let's read blessing. Let's read. Let's read blessing first. Let's go there. Blessing. Let's read the blessing. See, we didn't get the blessing. We still trying to get the blessing. So you know who the blessing is now? The blessing is receiving grace. The blessing is receiving Mashiach. See, Mashiach, Yahushua Mashiach, our Messiah and Savior. See, we got to go through him now to get the blessing. See, other than that, we still up under the curses. Why? Because we still hadn't break, we still hadn't closed the doors. We hadn't closed these doors that were opened by our ancestors. And this is the reason why we are the ones, black folk are the ones who have a higher risk of high blood pressure, hypertension, diabetes, strokes. Come on, y'all. Talking about it runs in the family. No, it don't. It runs in sin. It runs in sin. Because you heathens don't want to listen. That's the reason why. You don't have to be up under the curses. You don't have to be up under the curses. But you got to receive the promise. And you got to start walking in obedience. Other than that, up until, up until that point, you still up under the curses. You still under the curses. You still under the curses. Yes, the general. The, yes, listen. The generational curses are over with, with Yahusha, providing that you accept him. Our people haven't accepted him. Our people hadn't accepted him. So where does that leave you, if you don't receive the payment? See, if you don't receive the atonement, that still leaves you right there under the law. You still up under the curses. So how so how is it that our people are sinning willingly, deliberately under grace, eating, 
and drinking and smoking and snorting and popping and sexing anybody they want to. How, how are they not going to reap the curses? See, because now you got to obey the spirit, but they ain't even obeying the spirit. Why? Because they ain't got the spirit. That's the reason why they ain't got the spirit. Curses. And our people are, are leaving up out of here. See, the Most High Yah is not playing. Sickness and plague and disease and famine and all of that is coming to folks' door. Why? Because you didn't receive the promise. And because you didn't receive the promise, you don't have the spirit. And because you don't have the spirit, you can't obey the spirit. See what I'm saying? See, people think they got the spirit, but they don't. They only go to the Christian church once every three years on pagan Easter. They only go on pagan Easter celebrating Semiramis, this Babylonian goddess, once every three years celebrating Jesus after they've been sinning for the, but they are, but they up under all his grace. And then when you try to tell them something, well, you know what? You can't judge nobody. Well, that's the reason why you suffering. That's the reason why you Negroes are suffering because you don't want to listen. You don't want to listen to, you don't want to listen to correction. See? All right, here we go. I'm, I'm going to read the blessing. See, I'm going to read the blessing. Blessings for obedience. De Deuteronomy chapter 28. It says, if you fully obey Yahuwah, your Elohim, and carefully follow all his commands I give you today, Yahuwah, your Elohim, will set you high above all the nations on earth. We ain't above no nation on earth. We are not above no nation. Here we go. Verse two, all these blessings will come upon you and accompany you if you obey Yahweh your Elohim. Verse three, you will be blessed in the city and blessed in your country. You will be blessed in the city and blessed in the country. Four, the fruit of your womb will be blessed and the crops of your land and the young of your livestock, the calves of your herds and the lambs of your flocks. Five, your basket and your netting. And your kneading, the troll, will be blessed. Your basket and your kneading troll will be blessed. Six, you will be blessed when you come in and blessed when you go out. Verse seven, Yahuwah will grant that the enemies who rise up against you will be defeated. Okay? They will be defeated before you. They will come at you from one direction, but flee from you in seven. Y'all get that so far? Verse 8, Yahuwah will send a blessing on your barns and on everything you put your hand to. Yahuwah, your Elohim, will bless you in the land he has given you. Verse 9, Yahuwah will establish you as his holy people, as he promised you on oath, if you keep the commands of Yahuwah, your Elohim, and walk in his ways. That has not happened. Verse 10, then all the peoples on earth will see that you are called by the name of Yahuwah and that, and that they will fear you. Don't nobody fear us. They don't fear us. Verse 11, Yahuwah will grant you abundant prosperity in the fruit of your womb, the young of your livestock, and the crops of your ground, and in the land he swore to your forefathers to give you. We ain't in the land. We ain't in the land. We ain't in the land. We in the land. We in the, we in the land of the oppressor. See? That, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 31 Envy thou not the oppressor and choose none of his ways. Well, that's what we've been doing. Here we go. Listen, uh, verse 12, verse 11. Yahuwah will grant you abundant prosperity in the fruit of your womb, the young of your livestock and the crops of your ground in the land he swore to your forefathers to give you. Verse 12. Yahuwah will open the heavens, the storehouse of his bounty to send rain on your land in season and to bless all the work of your hands. You will lend, you will lend, listen, listen, listen. You will lend to many nations, meaning we'll lend money. We'll lend money to many nations, okay? But we'll borrow from none. We ain't lending to nobody. We ain't lent, we're being lent too. We're borrowing. See, our oppressors are doing the lending. See, y'all don't know. See, you, that's, see, this is the reason why you got to learn about the Federal Reserve. The car, the, come on. You got to learn about the central banking cartel over here in the United States of America. See, they lending, we borrowing, unable to pay it back. Come on, y'all. Listen, 
Then it says here, Yahuwah will open the heavens, the storehouse of his bounty, to send rain on your land in season and to bless all the work of your hands. You will lend to many nations, but will borrow from none. Verse 13. This is, now listen, this is where these Christian pastors like to come to, this is the only time, one of the only times they come to the Old Testament. This is one of the only times. The only, listen, let me, let me tell y'all. The only times that these Christian pastors go to the Old Testament is when they are preaching and highlighting prosperity and blessing. They don't teach that your, we didn't get it. We didn't get it. Why? Because we did not keep the law. We did not do what we were supposed to do. We did not walk in obedience. We don't, they don't teach that. Seminary trained. Cemetery brainwashed. See, they, they've been left dead by being taught by the cemetery. And that's the reason why they dead in the spirit, dead in the day, they dead in their brain, they dead in the spirit. Why? See, but they ain't teaching this. But what? Verse 13, here go your favorite Christian pastor's line. This is his favorite verse. The Lord will make you the head and not the tail. That's, they only say that one line. No, you the, you the tail. Black folk, African Americans, y'all the tail. We the tail, y'all. We the tail. Yeah, we the tail. Yes, we are. We ain't the head of nothing. Because guess who the head is? Mashiach. See, you got to receive Mashiach in order to not be the tail. And even when you receive Mashiach, you still ain't the head because he's the head. So what you talking about? What you doing? Verse 13, Yahuwah will make you the head and not the tail. If you pay attention to the commands of Yahuwah, your Elohim, see, they, they, they leave that part out. If you, if you pay attention to the commands of Yahuwah, your Elohim, that I give you this day and carefully follow them, you will always be at the top. So it was conditional. What was he teaching us with the law? He was teaching us the process of, and he was teaching us reaping and sowing. He was teaching us the concept of reaping and sowing. See, if you do good, you get good. If you do bad, you get bad. That, right? That was the law. And guess what? The law is not done away with, but now we have a helper. And see, sin still has consequences. So although now when we sin, we don't get the same consequences we received in the old covenant, in the old Testament, we still receive consequences. Why? Because sin still has consequences. So even though Mashiach fulfilled the law and we received the spirit and now we can obey the spirit by receiving Mashiach, we still got to obey the spirit because the law is now the spirit, not the letter. So we still got to obey the spirit. But our people are not obeying the spirit. So where does that leave you? It leaves you back. Now you fall up under the curses. So it, so he says that, listen, Yahuwah will make you the head. He, verse 13, Yahuwah will make you the head, not the tail. If you pay attention to the commands of Yahuwah, your Elohim, that I give you uh, this day and carefully follow them, you will always be at the top, never at the bottom. You will always be at the top, never at the bottom. We are at the bottom. We are at the bottom, y'all. Y'all ain't know that. Y'all ain't y'all ain't y'all ain't figured that out. You ain't read that. You ain't read that for yourself. You ain't studied that. You ain't cracked open your Bible outside of the pastor and saw that. When were you ever at the top? Always. You were never at the top. You were always at the bottom. Why? Because of disobedience. But wait a minute. It's two parts. Because at first it was disobedience. But then when Mashiach came, you didn't believe him. Just like y'all don't believe him today. So guess what we have now in the land of our captivity? We got two. We got two for the price of one. You, you disobedient and you don't believe. You heathens are catching the curses. Here we go. Here we go. Do not, listen, go. Do not, verse 14. Do not turn aside from any of the commands I give you today to the right or to the left. Following other gods and serving them. Following other gods. Well, y'all following every day. Y'all, man, y'all following every god under the sun. Y'all worshiping the queen of heaven. Y'all worshiping Asherah, Baal, Molech, man. Y'all, Nimrod. Every, every Sunday you go to church. Nimrod. 
Saturnalia on Christmas? Celebrating white Jesus, Serapis Christus? Come on. Y'all celebrating every God under the sun. Man, y'all worshiping yourselves. Now, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 1 through 14, were the blessings for obedience. How y'all getting blessed and y'all ain't being obedient? How y'all getting blessed? Who blessing y'all? Where the blessing coming from? Oh, but now let's go here. Let's go here. I'm 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 gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start here. Let's go. I'm 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 gonna go here. Let's go to uh Deuteronomy. Cuz I'm I'm not going to read. I'm not going to read all the curses for disobedience. I suggest y'all for all my first time Commas, black folk, African Americans, our people, you you really Israel. You the Israelites. You the Israelites that the scripture talks about. You the, you the Israelites. Yeah, you the same stiff neck Israelites that scripture talks about in the Old Testament, still serving them same gods of wood and stone, still being disobedient, still ain't, still not listening, still falling under sexual sin. Yeah, we y'all, we them people. Yeah, we are, we are. Yeah, it's a yeah, yeah. And they ain't said now, and they ain't said it yet. These Christian pastors ain't said nothing about it yet. When y'all gonna say something? When y'all gonna say something? See? But then you see, these Christian pastors are telling their congregation, don't you listen to them Hebrew Israelites. And the reason why they're saying that is because see, Satan then crept into the awakening. And he didn't pick, and see, Satan then, then plotted his seeds among those who don't receive Mashiach. And so this is how Satan has made his way into the awakening. And Satan has made it so that the ones who don't believe in Mashiach has a platform. And so this is the reason why when the Christians, our people still sitting in Christianity, our black people... African Americans, those who are still sitting in Christianity, when they see the Hebrew Israelites, they think we another cult. See, they think we another religion, and they don't realize that no, we are bloodline. We are we 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 are the we are the ones that Scripture talks about. But because Satan made his way in, it's turning it's turning off those of our people who really need to come out the churches. So the Christian pastors, the pork chop pork chop pastor, has found a way to blindside and to bamboozle our people into not listening to the Israelites. See? See, we're Hebrew by bloodline. Hebrew by blood. Not a cult. Not a religion. Hebrew by blood. Israelite by nationality. From the tribe of Judah, the tribe of Yahuda. It's in here. This is black history. See, this is real black history month right here. Y'all want black history? Here you go. Okay. Let's let's keep on going. But our people, they still worshiping Nimrod. They still they're still steeped in Babylonian European culture. That's what they, they still praying and they still praising white Jesus. The same white Jesus who, co who colonized us. See, this white Jesus is none other than Caesar Borgia who went around colonizing us and subjugating us and killing us. See, this is a Freemason Jesus. And they still sitting in Christian church today being entertained. A new form of entertainment. Still oppressed. Still thinking they going to get them something. They still think they get ready to get them something.
Pastor ain't even told them that Jesus Christ is really the Antichrist. They ain't, they ain't even told them that yet. Ain't never going to tell them. Ain't going to tell them. Seminary trained. See? Ain't going to teach you that this Jesus Christ is really Serapis Christus. That they were worshiping during the Greek captivity. See, they ain't going to tell them that. And that's the reason why they in Greek fraternities. Because they still caught up in the Greek captivity. Worshiping Serapis Christus. Who became Iesus Christos. Who further became Iesus Christus. And then became Jesus Christ. See. Tell them that. Tell them that. I know. Y'all can't believe everything you read. See what they see. How they see. See the witchcraft spirit. See? Okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm coming. Um, I wanted to go here. For, I wanted to go here. Let's go to... Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 28. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 28, 58, verse 58. Verse 58. Let's go there. Let's go there. See what I'm saying? Come on, y'all. This is the time. If y'all if y'all want to still teach, teach. Teach, teach it all. Go all the way. See, go all the way in. See, don't be halfway. No, go all the way in. Go all the way in. No, no, go all the way in. But see, they comfortable. They don't care about the people's salvation. They don't care about the people's educational level and edification. They don't care about that. They don't care about that. They so prideful and they so stiff necked and they and, 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 and they so rebellious and they so disobedient without the spirit dead. They won't even they won't even think to crack their mouths to fix their mouths to say anything about Christianity really being false, really being a religion of the Freemasons. They won't even crack their mouths to even say that. And the reason why is because. Half of them, if they don't, know, half of them don't know, and the other half know, they just don't care. And the ones that don't know, they don't even care to know at this point. Why? Because they've been so brainwashed, they don't even care. Their lifestyles have bought it. Their, their lifestyles, see, Jesus has funded their lifestyles. Christianity has funded them and has made a way for them to have everything they have. So they are not. And then so that means because if they say that Christianity is false and everything was a lie, that means that they can go ahead on and sh and rip in half their degrees and throw it in the trash. So they got trash hanging up on their walls right now. It's trash. Yeah. It's trash. It's garbage. Is garbage. Here we go. Deuteronomy chapter 25 verses 58 uh, to 67. Here we go. If you do not carefully follow all the words of this law, which are written in this book, and do not revere this glorious and awesome name, Yahuwah your Elohim, Verse 59, Yahuwah will send fearful plagues on you and your descendants. What we got going on? What have we had going on? Come on. The black plague. Y'all remember that? The bubonic plague. Black plague. The Italian plague. All, all these plagues. This plague right now that we got going on. The Spanish flu. All these plagues. The plague of Italy, the plague of London. See all these pla this plague right here.
Yahuwah will send fearful plagues on you and your descendants, harsh and prolonged. See? COVID, Delta, Omicron. Come on. The Most High is allowing, he's allowing stuff to go down and it's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. Ain't going nowhere. You See, you listen, you can't buy yourself out of this. You can't buy yourself out of this. You can't buy yourself out of this. And the reason why he's doing it, why? Because he's punishing these European nations. He's punishing the European nations and he's punishing the colonizers. But see, but see, Jake, but see, Jacob's getting it, too, because Jacob still can't hear. So, OK, Jacob, get the plague. Get the plague, Jacob. Go on. Black folk. Grand, yeah, grand, grandma, grandmama, grandmama Hannah done died and we done had eight deaths in the family and you, you better wake up, better wake up and see. People dying left and right, you better wake up and see. The Most High is calling you. These last two years, have probably been for the majority of our people the worst two years that they've had ever or in a long time. Why? Because the time is now. That's why. The 400 years, which is a whole nother teaching. I ain't going to go there. I'm going I'm to do another teaching. But the 400 years. See, the 400 years is up, meaning the enemy is being judged. The enemy is getting judged. See? That's what's happening. The judgments. And because we're and because our black people, our black men and women, our African-American uh, men and women are so connected to the oppressor, the plagues, see the judgments and the ramification of the judgments and the plagues are reaching our people and our people can't see it. Because our people love Egypt too much. They love Babylon too much to even see. They've been blinded. Why? Because they believe the lie. See, that's why. Because our people trust and believe in money too much. They trust and believe in science too much. They trust and believe in their degrees too much. They trust and believe in their own willpower too much. They trust and believe in their own strength too much. And that's the reason why our people going to die. Our people getting ready to start dying even more at an alarming rate. You better watch what I tell you. Y'all, we ain't seen nothing yet. We ain't seen nothing. We ain't seen nothing yet. Hold on. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me go here. Verse 59 still. Yahoo will send fearful plagues on you and your descendants harsh and prolonged disasters. Harsh and prolonged disasters. Now, he said that, that this is Deuteronomy, though. Think about it. This is Deuteronomy. And we're still facing the same judgments today. This wasn't back in the Bible days. This wasn't back 4,000 years ago. No. No. Nah. It's today. It's happening. And y'all still sad because grandma, grandma Maple, she didn't make Christmas dinner this year. That's the problem. Y'all still celebrating these pagan traditions. You don't even realize that stuff's happening because you can't care. Because you ain't, because you can't, you can't see, you can't hear. So he's got to keep stuff happening. So as you see. So he said, severe, Yahuwah will send fearful plagues on you and your descendants, harsh and prolonged disasters and severe and lingering illnesses, severe and lingering illnesses. That's why our black people are suffering. I'm telling you with everything. Sickle cell. Rheumatoid arthritis. Back pains left and right, migraines, inflammation in the body, lung cancer, heart disease, kidney disease, hypertension, lupus, sickle cell, AIDS, HIV, you name it, you name it. 
severe and lingering illnesses. That's us. That's us. Yeah, that's us. Fibroids in women, breast cancer, cervical cancer. Come on, y'all. Come on. Now why, they, now, why they not talking about this? Why are we not talking about this? Between 1932 and 1972, they conducted a study. The United States government conducted a study with 600 of our black men to observe untreated syphilis under the guise of free health care. You heathens don't, and you heathens still don't get it. You heathens don't get it. Three hundred of ninety nine of whom died, whom died from this experiment with this syphilis that was left untreated. See. Forty wives died, 19 children died, had congenital syphilis. Come on. But you heathen still want to get stuck with something, do you? Because you think it's going to free you. It's going to save you. It's going to help you. And that's why y'all dying. Because you heathens don't want to listen. Y'all won't listen. Y'all won't listen. Here we go. 60. He will bring on you all the diseases of Egypt that you dread it and they will cling to you. Told you. Herpes. See? All these diseases. HPV. Oh, come on. All these diseases. You name it. You got it. We got it. Autoimmune disease. Acquired immune deficiency syndrome. AIDS for you heathens that don't want to listen. <laughs> Time to tell y'all. See, this is this is this is real black history here. It's in scripture. Type 1, type 2 diabetes told you that. Everything you can imagine. Here we go. 60, 60, verse 60. He will bring on you all the diseases of Egypt that you dreaded and they will cling to you. Verse 61. Yahuwah will also bring on you every kind of sickness and disaster not recorded in this book of the law until you are destroyed. Come on. Is this not us? He said he will bring on us every kind of sickness and disaster not recorded in this book. The scripture's playing right out. It's playing right out before our eyes. See? But y'all still want to live, you still want to live reckless. You still want to live like you want to. Because can't nobody tell you what to do. Because you grown. See, you grown. You independent. You a boss. Oh, really? Okay. 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 Here we go. Verse 62, verse 62, you who were as numerous as the stars in the sky will be left, but few in number because you did not. 
because you did not because you did not worship. Hold on, because I left something out here. See y'all, y'all see. Listen, see two, and, and then it says here, um, yeah, because you didn't obey. You who were you who were as numerous as the stars in the sky will be left but few in number because you did not obey Yah or your Elohim. What well, the same thing there? You do, well see now it's see it's still obeying Yah. You ain't obeying the spirit. So because you're not obeying the spirit, then you're left few in number. That's why the graveyards are filled up. That's why the penitentiary is filled up. That's why the morgues are filled up. That's why the hospitals are filled up. That's why the psychiatric awards are filled up. The mental institutions are filled up. That's why. All because we don't want to listen to our Heavenly Father. We want everything but Him. We want everything but him. Think about it. Just think about it. Think. Just think. Th just listen. Do an inventory when it comes to your co-workers, your old friends and family members and all those that you around. Think about it. Look at the people around you. They living like they want to live. They don't care nothing about the most, huh? And they always going through something too. They might get blessed by bail. And next thing you know, a disaster, a devastation hit, death. It's always something. Can't never really get ahead. You just bought a new house, but you just found out that your husband got a tumor in his brain. Oh, y'all ain't, y'all ain't hearing me. Yeah, y'all, yeah, yeah. You just got a new promotion in the federal government, but you just found out that your wife has breast cancer. Come on, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just telling you. Ain't nothing ever going to be right. Husband just got him a new business, just built him a new business. Wife just graduated from college. But the child is demon possessed. <laughs> Y'all ain't the child's demon possessed. Why? Because the tech by why? Because technology and the video games that raised your child while you were daddy, while you was busy building your business, and mama while you was busy getting your degree of indoctrination, your child was left unattended. Satan was raising your child. You ain't never gonna have it right. Both of y'all work for white corporate America, but don't none of y'all know the word. Don't near one of y'all know nothing. Y'all don't know the word. If I asked you, well, what's your favorite scripture? You don't even know a scripture. You don't even know what, well, what's a scripture? But y'all so intelligent. Y'all so smart. One got a doctorate, one got a master's. And y'all don't know nothing about the word. Well, I don't know the word. I don't know that. I don't. You heathens. What's wrong with y'all? See? So, see, this is the reason why I ain't impressed. See, I'm not impressed by your little by your little teeny weeny no good PhD. I ain't I ain't impressed. Nor am I intimidated. See, I'm. I don't care how much money you make a year. I see. I don't care about that. I don't care how many celebrities you didn't met. See, I don't care about that. I don't care how many cars you have. See, I don't care about that. I'm not impressed. See, I'm unimpressed by everything. Nothing impresses me. The only thing that impresses me is the power of the Most High Yah. You know what impresses me? When I go through scripture and I see, I see everything playing out just as he said, I'm impressed. See, I'm impressed by that. When I go through and I start studying and a scripture that I done already studied four or five times start coming alive again and gives me a new revelation, oh, I'm impressed. I ain't impressed by nothing. 
I ain't impressed by your vacations. I ain't impressed by your selfies. I ain't impressed by your, by your photo bombing with your fake family and friends pretending like y'all happy. I ain't impressed. I ain't impressed with your new career. I ain't impressed with, I, I ain't impressed. I ain't impressed. I'm unimpressed. It means nothing. See, when the most high y'all wakes you up, you become unimpressed. You become uninterested. I ain't interested. I don't want to go. A whole lot of stuff that used to mean the world to you means now absolutely nothing to you. Everything that you, you, everything that you used to die to receive, now you would die to give it away. It don't mean nothing. Don't mean nothing. Because these very things been keeping you from the most high Yah all this time. See, everything that you've been working for, everything you've been looking, everything you've been working for, everything you've been looking to achieve, all the distractions, all your aspirations and goals, all your constituents, all your clients. Yeah, yeah, all your business deals, all of that's been separating you. See, that's been your God. See, that's been, see, that's been, that's been what's been keeping you from the most high Yah all this time. And the gap and the gap is widening as we go. Here we go. Uh, verse 62. You who were as numerous as the stars in the sky will be left but few in number because you did not obey Yahuwah your Elohim. Verse 64. Then Yahuwah will scatter you among all nations. There we go right there. Will scatter you among all nations. Judah is scattered. We're scattered everywhere. Many of us still being heavily oppressed in these other nations in which we've been scattered. Then Yahuwah will scatter you among all nations from one end of the earth to the other. There you will worship other gods of wood and stone. There you will come on. Yeah. There you will worship. Other gods, gods of wood and stone, which neither you nor your ancestors have known. We ain't know nothing about no white Jesus in stone. See, we ain't know nothing about the statue of Hermes, the good shepherd Christ. We ain't know nothing about that. We ain't know nothing about that. See, those are the Western barbaric European nations. We ain't know nothing about them. We ain't know nothing about Jupiter. The statue of Peter, we ain't know nothing about that. Madonna and the child, we ain't know nothing about that. The, the statue of Mary and baby Jesus, we ain't know nothing about that. Gods of wood and stone, we ain't know nothing about the Tammuz cross, we ain't know nothing about that. The cobblestone, did they walk around? I don't know how many times it is, four, seven times a day. The cobblestone in Islam, we ain't know nothing about that. See, we ain't know nothing about none of that. Worshiping gods of wood and stone. Some of y'all got the statue of Buddha right there in your foyer. Soon as you come in the door, you got Buddha sitting right there and you can't see why you got nightmares every other night. You don't even know why every time you turn around, it's a sickness. It's a plague. Because you got to, because you got to, you. Because you got Buddha sitting right at your door as soon as you come in. That's why. Because you got chicken feet hanging from the door. That's why. Because you got a deck of tarot cards. In your drawer. That's why. You know why? Cause you got that red band around your around your wrist, that Kabbalah. See, talking about it symbolizes friendship, a bond, a bond with my family, and you don't realize all y'all got demons with that red band of Kabbalah on your wrist. That's the reason why, cause you heathens don't listen. Y'all don't listen. Somebody try to tell you, and you think somebody's cramping your style. You think somebody hating. As soon as somebody tell you something, y'all, you hating. Okay.
They ain't, y'all ain't listening. They ain't listening. That's bur- sage. That's right. Burning that sage. Inviting more demons. Y'all can't even see why. So, shoot, gods of wood. Man, that Christmas tree is wood. People be worshiping that. You got some people keep the Christmas tree up all year. Some people, they you better not tell them they can't handle no Christmas tree. It's a God to them. But see, they can do without the most high y'all. They can't do without their Christmas tree. Oh, no, got to have my Christmas tree. Yeah. Crystal balls, all that. Crystal balls and, I mean, Ouija boards, crystal balls. I told you these little amulets that they wear, all these charms on their bracelets and all these charms on their necklaces and all of this foolishness, they, they, you see? People don't even know. And I'm just looking at this foolishness, like shaking my head. See? Still showing off your new cars online. Still showing off everything you got. Then you wonder why people hating on you. Then next post, man, people hating on me because you, you keep broadcasting everything you got. Don't you know that that breeds hate and envy? It breeds jealousy. Don't you know that? That's vanity. Don't you know that? We passed that. I don't need to post everything I have online for people to see what I'm doing and how I'm doing. And you doing that for attention anyway. Then you wonder, then you wonder why people don't like you. See, this is the type of stuff I'm talking about. You're cussing every day, four, five, six, seven, eight times a day. Cussing every other word out your mouth is a cuss word. You always talking about fornicating and getting money. And then soon as somebody die, you talking about, can y'all pray for me? No, I can't pray for you. Pray for you. Pray for yourself. No, I don't pray. No, I can't pray for you. Come on, y'all. We, 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 we got to do better. We got to do better than this. Pray for yourself, gangster. Hustler. G. Thug. Pray for yourself. Pretty face. Ain't that what they call you at work? Pretty face. Pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. No, I can't. No, we can't pray for you. Just like when the Most High Yah Abba told Jeremiah, don't pray for these people. I ain't praying for you. Pray for you for what? What am what I'm praying for? I've been trying to tell you. People have been trying to tell you. But I know we needed to level up. See, we needed to level up. We needed to boss up. We needed to step up. We needed to get on your level. Cause, but now you need prayer. Why don't you pray? Big shot. Here we go. Verse 65. Verse 65. Among those nations, you will find no repose. Rest. You'll find no rest. You'll always be toiling. You'll be toiling from sun up to sundown. Some of y'all can't even see right now why y'all work two and three jobs and still can't get ahead. Work two and three jobs, still can't save no money. Work two or three jobs, and it seems like, guess what? You got more going out than you got coming in. You got more money going out than you got coming in. You, y'all, 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 you ain't got no rest nowhere. Everywhere you go, there's ruckus. There's destruction everywhere you go. Among those nations, you will find no repose, no resting place for the sole of your foot. Everywhere you go, it's going to be drama. Everywhere you go, it's going to be a fight. Everywhere you go, you're going to be scrutinized. Everywhere you go, you're going to be terrorized. Everywhere you go. 
somebody going to be after you. Everywhere you go, you're going to have to look over your shoulder, making sure don't nobody take nothing because you've been boasting and bragging on IG and Facebook for a whole month. You done told everybody you got a new job. You done showed them inside the house, the new car. You done showed them everything. Ain't going to be no rest for you. There, Yahuwah will give you an anxious mind. Eyes weary with longing and a despairing heart. This is why people are always scared of stuff. The first sight of trouble. They was worshiping Jesus every Sunday. See, they see they was highly favored and blessed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. As soon as a little plague come, they scared to death. Why? An anxious mind. You got an anxious mind. You always on edge. You afraid of something. Every time a little bill come in, you scared. Come on, y'all. Every time a sickness come, you're frightened. You scared of death. Can't talk about spiritual warfare. Soon as somebody start talking about what Satan's doing and why he's doing what he's doing, oh, we 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 don't we don't we don't talk about the devil. We don't talk about Satan. But every time you eat something, you eating Satan. Every time you drink something, you drinking Satan. Every time you celebrate these pagan traditions, you celebrating Satan. Every time you talk on the phone, you talking about Satan. But no, we don't. We don't talk about the devil. But the devil steadily whipping your butt. But you haven't identified the devil yet. You hadn't identified Satan yet. And you don't even know. You got Satan living with you. <laughs> you got Satan living with you. You got Satan living in your bed with you. But we don't, we, we, we just keep our eyes on Jesus. You keeping your eyes on the Antichrist, Satan. See? He said, that's why he said, there, there. There, there where? In these nations, in these other nations in which he scattered us. There, Yahuwah will give you an anxious mind, eyes weary with longing and a despairing heart. And a despairing heart. You'll always be grieved, meaning you'll have money, but you'll, all, but you'll be lonely. You'll always be longing for something. Don't you get, don't you get it? Don't y'all get that? Multi-millionaires. I remember, I think it was last year sometime, they had business. It was a couple. They had a booming, thriving business. They had money. I mean, they had, I believe that they had more opportunities coming along the way because of their businesses and their constituents. I think they killed, I think one of them killed the man. I, I forgot what happened, but I think the husband killed the wife. It was either the husband killed the wife or the wife killed the husband. And then killed and then turned the gun on themselves. Um, but they thriving. They got money. They got a booming business. Everything's going right. Why'd you kill yourself? Despairing heart. Because you thought your dream spouse and your dream business and you thought all of your money and your lavish living, you thought that that was going to fill your heart up. See, you thought that that was going to fill the gap. But then guess what he said? He said, you're going to have a longing heart, a longing and despairing heart. Meaning that, guess what? No matter where you go, no matter what you search for, no matter what you achieve, you still going, you still going to be in need. You still going to have an anxious mind, eyes weary with longing and a despairing heart. Verse 66. Here we go. This is it. You will live in constant suspense. You will live in constant suspense, filled with dread both day and night. Never show up your life. See, you will live in constant suspense. What, what, what's wrong? Right? What's happening right now, y'all? People are not even shit. They're not, they're not even sure of their lives right now. They're not even sure. Well, if I don't take it, they're going to fire me. If I don't take it, they're not going to promote me. If they not gonna, if I don't take it, I can't fly. So you're living in constant suspense. If I don't take it, people, I'm going to get sick. And you don't even know the dad going to think getting you sick. That's why your people dying. You live in constant suspense, filled with dread both day and night. Never sure of your life. You don't know whether you're going to get laid off on your job or not. You don't know whether you're going to catch cancer or not because it ran in your family because of sin. You don't know what's going to happen to you. You 
don't, you don't know whether I don't know if I'm going to get fired. I don't know if I'm going to get laid off. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get married. I don't know. Uh, you never sure nothing. See, you never sure your life. You're never sure. Still under the curses, y'all. Still under the curses. Why? Disobedience. Why? Unbelief. Unbelief. Disobedience. Unbelief. Disobedience. Not listening. Stiff neck. Rebellious. Unbelief. You don't believe. You don't trust. You don't have faith. That's what your problem is. And so, because of that, verse 66 again, you will live in constant suspense, filled with the dread both day and night, never sure of your life. You will dread the night and you will dread the day. 67. Now, this was in slavery. Verse 66. In the morning, you will say, if only it were evening, and in the evening, if only it were morning. See, that's what they said in slavery. See? Why? Because our women were getting raped by the slave master to breed out more slaves. See, you got to realize something. Our people were being sold on auction blocks for different prices according to scale. See, our women wasn't good. See, our, see our women, they, see, they weren't good enough. See, but we were sure good enough to, to, to breastfeed their babies. We were sure good enough to get raped. To breed out more slaves. And then the ones that they deem unfit, they fed them to alligators. See, our babies became alligator bait. Why? Because, because those that they felt were, un, were, were, were unqualified and deemed unfit to survive because they had they had deformities or they had some type of disability, they will feed them to the alligators. See, that's what they did to the babies that were birthed from the womb of our women. Alligator bait. Y'all better get what I'm saying. You will li listen in the morning. You will say if only it were evening and in the evening, if only it were morning. Yeah. See, our people weren't just cotton pickers like they want to make us believe. No, our people, our people were nurses and blacksmiths and plumbers and they were architects. Electricians. Our people were bricklayers, carpenters. See, our people had skill. And so this is the reason why they would sell us. They would breed us out and sell us and they would keep the strongest men. It was just like they do today. They keep the strongest men and they kill off the ones they feel like are unfit for society. Sterilization. Sterilization. Your girl, what, what, what's, what's the demon name? What's the witch name? Margaret Sanger in 1916 started the first abortion clinic over here, Planned Parenthood. We she had to get rid of black folk because we were becoming too dominant. And we would get we will if, if, if they continued to breed, if we continued to breed out, then we would breed out their race. So they had to find a way to sterilize our women so that they could not reproduce. Oh, y'all got to Come on, y'all. Oh, see, our people don't know that. Same thing today. Uh huh. 67, in the morning you will say, if only it were evening, and in the evening, if only it were morning, because of the terror that will fill your hearts and the sights that your eyes will see. See, all the stuff. See? Because all the stuff you're going to see, dead bodies laying right outside your apartment, because they didn't been shooting all night because the wrong person came in the wrong hood with the wrong colors on. So you can bring slavery right on up to the day. Because slavery, it ain't no different. It's just modernized. It's just modernized. That's all. That's all. That's all. And the stuff that our people seen from slavery has came down on the children, has came down to the third and fourth generation. See? 
Why? Because the fears of our people have transcended to the next generation. And that's the reason why we scared. We scared based upon the stuff based upon based upon the terror that our people have seen based upon the terror that our parents have seen our parents parents have seen our parents 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 have seen they've seen all the terror they didn't get rid of it they didn't pray it away they kept these demonic doors open well it's come down to us and that's the reason why our hearts are filled with terror based upon the things that we going to see and we see same it's nothing different Nothing no different. I'm, I'm, I'm about done, y'all. I'm, I'm about done. I'm about done. See? But this is this is where we are. This is where we are though. This is where we are. See? So I had to I had to, to bring my pineapple drink down here. Mm-hmm. People better get it right. People better get it right. See, there was a see there was a guy named um J. Edgar Hoover. J. Edgar Hoover, he was the director of the FBI between in, in 1971, I think it was. You see, gotta realize something. The FBI, they had a program called the Counterintelligence Program, which was COINTELPRO. And J. Edgar Hoover, he was the director at the time, and he said the worst thing, the worst thing that could happen, his fear was Negro unity. That that was the worst thing. That was the fear. Negro you, Negroes unifying. And that's the reason why even today when Negroes, when, when people see a bunch of Negroes congregating and, assemb and, 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 and coming and unifying and coming together, what they, they come break it up. Just like at the job, go to any job and you see three and four brothers standing together by the computer or standing by the punching clock. Somebody going to come break that joint up. They come break it up. Stand, be standing outside the 24, the 24 hour tobacco shop. Where they standing outside, they come break it up. See, see, Negro unity. What y'all talking about? What y'all talking about? What y'all, what y'all doing? Come on, y'all. See, this is the type of stuff that we are dealing with today. And by the way. All of this is public record. All everything I just said tonight is public record. You can go look it up. Everything I said, everything I said tonight, you can look it up. You can look it up. So it ain't no. So I ain't saying nothing that they ain't said. They said it, and I'm saying it. Cause it's down. It's documented. It's documented. Just look it up. That's all you got to do. See, our people don't want to look it up. Because you know why? Our people want to stay sedated. They want to stay asleep. See, our people have the mentality that, you know what, don't even tell me. I don't even want to know. That's, our people got that mentality. They don't even want to know. And they don't even realize they're going to be judged for not wanting to know. I mean, you, whoa, 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 whoa. You mean tell me you had the information available to you? You mean you had somebody willing to teach you and you decided that you don't even want to know? Oh, judgment. Judgment. That means, but that means that you shun correction. So you gonna be judged. See, but our people so see. I gotta say it. See, our people so stupid that see they think that not knowing is gonna keep them safe. They think not knowing. They think staying silent and keep they, they see. They think sitting back and staying silent and laying low and letting things go the way they've been going and contributing to the sin. They think they gonna be safe. 
They think they, 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 see, they think they gonna keep their cars and keep their comfort and they don't even realize they gonna be the first ones to get affected. When all of this stuff start happening, when famine hit, hyperinflation flies through the roof, Come on, y'all. When Yeah, when famine hit, when hyperinflation flies through the roof and the dollar crash, the economical system implodes and everything goes down and, and, and ain't no more lights, they're going to be the first ones. Yeah, the ones that didn't want to know nothing, know this. Know this. I don't even want to know. Okay, fine. Don't listen. Don't know. You ain't got to know. See, that's, how, that's the mentality our people got. They think not knowing is a safe zone. What I don't know won't hurt me. No. See how Satan, see these ideologies of the world? What you know, what you don't know won't hurt you. Well, what I don't know won't hurt me. No, what you don't know, you know, you're right. It won't hurt you. It's going to fry you because it's going to send you to hell. What you don't know will fry you. Especially when you had the opportunity to know. Oh, yes. Oh, it's going down, y'all. I'm just telling you. I don't. Hey, hey, I'm just the messenger. I don't know nothing. I ain't got no degrees. I ain't that smart. But I do know one thing. I do know that the most high y'all is saying something. I do know. I do know that the most high y'all is angry. I do know that. Oh, I do know that. Yeah, he's angry. He is. Oh, he's still merciful. And he's still graceful, but he's angry. But you got these lying pastors saying that God's not mad. No, you right. Satan, he he ain't mad at y'all because y'all still doing what he y'all still doing what he telling y'all to do. So you right. You right. He ain't mad at y'all. No, y'all is mad, though. See, those who are righteously walking. Without Heavenly Father, see, Satan's mad at us. Satan's mad at us. The Heavenly Father is not mad at us. You get that? But the ones who are living for Satan, Satan ain't mad at them. But Yahoo is pissed. He's angry at them. Oh, come on. He's mad. Because he's saying, I'm making it plain and clear for y'all to get it. I got one in every family. Just like we didn't had every hoe, every stripper, every pimp, every gang banger, every thug, every drug addict, every drunk. We didn't had every narcissist. Yeah, yeah, that's right. See, it's always one in the family. Every homosexual is always one in the family. Well, now I got a prophet in your family. I got somebody who understands the true word in your family, and you ain't listening to them. They online pumping out, pushing out my word. They online, they, they online honoring my word, making my name known, coming with the truth. See, it's always one in the family. Have you ever noticed that? It's always one. You always got one in the family. You know, you, you know, you notice that? You always got one that's always blaming somebody. He's bl he caught he got one always blaming somebody in the family. That one, you always got one. See, ain't no excuse. Ain't no excuse for this. That's why I say they're gonna be judged. You got a family where there was a Christian pastor in the family for twenty years, but then you got somebody that Abba raised up. In two years, no more than the Christian pastor, but the Christian pastor won't even listen to the prophet in their own family teaching them. Why? Because they they too prideful because they will not come off their high horse and listen to someone that's younger than them. That obviously has been taught by the Ruach. Do you see why? It's one in every family. So these people ain't going to have no excuse when it all come down to it, because he's going to say, I, I raised somebody up to, to edify you. But see, I know what it was. You was relying on yourself because if you really had the spirit, you would have listened to anybody that had the spirit because it wouldn't have been about the age difference. It wouldn't have been about the gender. It wouldn't have been about the look and the educational history. It would have been about the spirit recognizing the spirit. So because you didn't listen, you didn't have the spirit or because you didn't listen, you didn't recognize and take heed to the spirit. Judgment. Judgment. So I'm trying to tell you all 
This stuff's going down. That stuff's going down. See? I'm telling you. Stuff's happening. All right, y'all. Let me, let me. See, our people got to get this. You know? And guess what? And guess what? I love all of my Latino brothers and sisters. I love all my Chinese brothers and sisters, my Japanese brothers and sisters. I love all my Caucasian brothers and sisters. I love all my... See, I ain't... I ain't I, see, that, see, in order to preach a word like this, you got to have love in your heart. Because if you ain't got love in your heart, you'll walk around, you'll walk around spiteful and hateful. And you and see the most high don't want that. He wants you to that's the reason why a word like this can't be preached and taught by everybody. Because see, people will spark up division and hate. And that's not what I'm doing. I'm just trying to get my people to see the reason why we are in the conditions that we're in and how to change it. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear them from heaven, forgive them of their sin, and heal their land. See, but see, we at a point now where guess what? Oh, this land ain't going to get healed. See, ain't no healing for this land. Not now. The cup. I did not tell y'all about the cup. Remember, we talked about the cup, the cup of iniquity. Oh, it's run over now. Ain't nothing. It's judgment time now. No judgment. But he been telling us how to heal the land. He been telling us what we could do. But we've been turning to crooked politicians to get laws changed, to try to accommodate our sinful lifestyles. Because, see, it really wasn't about a change. It was really just about making it conducive enough for us to be able to live the American dream so we could be up there with Satan like they are. Wealthy, having everything. But the most I said, oh, no, sir. Oh, no, sir. Not without me, you won't. No, 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 no. Not without me. See, not without me. You will not be wealthy without me. Cause if you did get reparations, y'all so y'all so downtrodden. Y'all are so listen, y'all are so brainwashed. Y'all are so hard of hearing. Y'all are so y'all are so unrepentant and unforgiving. Y'all are so damaged and destroyed. Y'all are so destroyed. Y'all are so depressed and miserable and trodden down that if y'all got wealthy, you fools would spend it up and give it right back to your oppressor. You'd give it right back to Mercedes Benz. You'd give it right back to Gucci. You'd give it right back to the same ones who've been oppressing you and exploiting you. No, y'all heathens ain't getting no reparation. You heathens ain't getting no money. Are you crazy? All y'all gonna do is go out here and buy weed farms. And buy you a strip club. Get, get out of here. Y'all ain't getting no reparations. Just stay. Go, just go ahead and stay getting killed. And stay getting shot. And stay getting diseased up until I come back. Just do that. And the only way you going to get out of this is if you come back to me. See, you ain't going ain't gonna to be no way out of this. You ain't going to be able to get out of this but through me. I'm telling y'all. I'm telling y'all tonight. If I don't say nothing else. If I don't preach another word. Y'all going to get this tonight. Our people need to understand. Ain't going to be nothing until you go back to the most high Yah. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's all. That's it. And so now when people dying, the only thing, the only question I ever got is, I, I sure hope they were born again. Sure hope they were born again. Okay, let me help you, black folk. Let me help your grandmother and your daddy. Your daddy and your mommy and your friends who you've been turning up with ain't no happy heavenly birthday. They're not in heaven. They're not in heaven. Ain't no pull me one, pull, pull out one. I'm going to pull one out for you, partner. I hope you up there turning up in heaven for me. So when I get up there, we can get it popping. No, 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 black folk. No, sir. No, 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 sir. No, sir. No. If you're, if you're, if, if, if Pookie, if Pookie and pa listen, if Pookie and John, John and Joe, Joe, if they weren't born again, they are in torment and judgment in Sheol. They are not in heaven. 
let me go ahead and do your funeral for you now. So when you go ahead on the tube page, you can play this for your funeral. Let me preach at your funeral. See, that's the problem with us. We don't want to stand up and tell it like it is. Oh, my baby, he was a good boy and man, he didn't hurt nobody. But then we go to his Facebook page and he's sitting up there posting up with shotguns and Uzis and with a blunt in his mouth with sunglasses on. Your baby was a menace to society. He where he should be. Nah, he ain't a no heaven. Come on, come on. But then now you want somebody to come and pray for you. And now you want somebody to, now you want to blame the system. And my prop, my whole question be, all that time while he was doing what he was doing, what was you doing? You ain't, because that's all the, see, that's all the detectives don't going to do. See, that's all the detectives, the police, all, see, that's all law enforcement going to do. That's all the FBI going to do. You know what they're going to do? As soon as your baby got killed and he got shot, they're going to go right to the Facebook page because, you see, they, they on it anyway. They're going to go right to Facebook and they're going to start scrolling. Do, do, look. There you go, look. There go your baby right there. There go your baby. Is that your baby? With a 9 millimeter in his hand, is that your baby? With a stack of hundreds sitting on the table with a mountain of cocaine. Is that your baby? That's your baby? Okay. Okay. And see, a pre a past Okay. Okay. And see, a pre a past and see, listen, at every funeral. Pastors should be preaching where they going. Why nobody does that? Why every why 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 every funeral we go to, they in heaven? Automatically they got wings and everybody's Man, I be up that joint preaching. All right, you know. Was he if he wasn't born again, if he if she or she wasn't born again, they are in the torment and judgment side of Sheol. They are not in heaven. They are waiting. For the final judgment, they are not in heaven. You've been operating off your third eye for all this time. Walking around with your independent self, ladies, being a gypsy woman. Beating dudes out for their money and reveling in their broken hearts. Only out for the sex. You just want to sell your body for the money. Well, guess where you going when you die, honey cakes? You're going right down to judgment and torment. And all your girlfriends are going to come together and have an AKA party. Celebrating their Sora sister, who was no longer with us, talking about how she been a good, she's been a good woman, and that's my friend. Yeah, but your friend was living in sin. Your friend was living in sin, and so I'm saying right now, I'm telling you right now, this it, stuff's gonna continue to happen. And my only question gonna be, well, were they born again? Ain't nobody asking that question. See, we ain't asking the right questions. We ain't. I don't, that's the problem. See, we ain't asking the right questions. We, 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 we're not, ha listen, when we are here alive and well, we're not having the right conversations. And therefore, when people start dying, we're not asking the right question. See, we would not have to ask no question if we had the right conversations when we were all living, when we were all living and breathing. See, so when you died, I would already know you sleep. I know where you're going. See, happy heavenly birthday. First of all, birthdays are a satanic holiday and they not in heaven. They, you, you, you see how wrong all on all sides. You wrong, 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 wrong. If your baby did not accept Yahushua HaMashiach as his Messiah and Savior, he or she. Sorry. Sorry. 
See that dying, that dying and going to a place to get your sins cleansed, to be good enough to stand before our Heavenly Father and go to heaven. That's purgatory. That's purgatory. That right there was propagated by the Roman Catholic Church. See, purgatory was 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 propagated and disseminated to keep these these apathetic Christians sleep and to keep them living in sin so that if they just, if they died, if they could have lived like, they could have lived like hell their whole entire lives. They could have lived for Satan their whole entire lives, lived in sin, partied and did everything and anything they wanted. And then when they die, they could go to a place where they could be cleansed and then that they can be to heaven. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Mm -mm. No, because Yahushua HaMashiach is the only payment for sin. He cleans you up, not purgatory. But this is what we got. And with that, they ain't even preaching at the at the wake at the wake and the funeral what's supposed to be preached. All right. All right. So no, your baby is not in heaven. Your baby is not an angel, and your baby did not get wings. Sorry. Sorry to tell you. Yeah. I'm going to go here. Let me go here. Uh, I'm going to be at you guys in a minute. See, ain't no wings. No, ain't no wings. Ain't no wings. See, the only, the, see, the only ones who will have their spiritual bodies are the ones who were born again. And when they died, they went to the comfort side. They went to the comfort and the peace side, the resting side. Meaning that your spirit and your soul went before our heavenly father. It's in front of him. See, that's what that means. And you, and you are peacefully resting. That's what that means. And so at the end, your bodies will be reunited with your spiritual bodies. But now if you weren't born again, because guess what? Everybody got to stand before Yahuwah on Judgment Day. So that just means that those who didn't make it, they going to see the kingdom. But they ain't going to stay. They'll see the kingdom. They'll see. They ain't going to stay. They got to get the judgment. See, that's that. see people got to, you got to think. See, man, you, I, I, be, I be thinking about this stuff. Just she be thinking about this. The scripture says body, both body and soul will be destroyed in hell. That's what, see, that's what the scripture said. Both body and soul in hell. So ain't no spiritual body for you. Where was your wings at? That, that, that's the question. See why we ain't, see how we not asking the right question? Where were your wings? You ain't getting no wings? I'm trying to tell you. I don't get no wings. I don't get no wing. All right, y'all. This is, um, This is the last one I got. Last one. Last one. And here's the thing. Now listen. We ain't got to fear. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 1 verses 7 says that he did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind. So if we are in Mashiach, we don't have to be scared of nothing. See, we ain't got to fear. 
All we got to do, all we have to do is remain in him, remain with him. Just remain in him. See, our heavenly father is not. Scripture says, be perfect as your heavenly father is in heaven, right? The heavenly father knows you not going to be perfect. He, Listen, y'all, please get this. The heavenly father is looking for effort. He's looking for effort. He's looking for you to, to, to desire him more, to desire him more than anything. He's looking for you to desire righteousness and holiness, just like you desire sex, just like you desire money, just like you desire to live your own lives. No, he wants you to desire him through that desire. He will you will live righteous. You cannot stop. You cannot keep on sinning deliberately. If you desire him. John chapter three, verses 30. May he increase and I decrease. Let him increase in your life, meaning allow him to use you. Allow him to operate inside of you. Allow him to be your intentions. Allow him to be your motive. Allow him. Allow him to take over. You understand. See, we ain't gonna, cause that's the thing. See, we don't have to fear. That's the reason why you ain't, when you in him and walking with him, you ain't got to fear. It's not that, okay, dang, I made a mistake today, so I'm, I'm, I'm done. No, it's not like that. No, he, it's intention. Listen, y'all, it's heart motive. It's intention. It's desire. It's effort. It's stand in him. It's relying on him. It's believing him. It's studying him. Do y'all get what I'm saying? It's having a communication level with him. That's what it is. And he will do the rest once you do that. But we're talking about people that's just, they want to live while they want to live. See, now you are going to be scared. Yeah, you should be. Because see, you're trying to keep your life. You're trying to keep your own life. You're trying to do what you want to do. And people are scared. Because they're trying to figure out how they're going to keep their own lives with all of this stuff going on. And it ain't going to be but so long before, you know, before they go have to fall off. It's almost like, it's almost like hanging on the edge of the cliff. See? Instead of you just surrendering to our heavenly father, you're trying to figure out all you're going to need to stay up on the cliff so you can get up on your own. And it ain't but so long you could go like that before you lose your grip on the cliff and fall. Why? Because you still keep trying to save your life instead of just surrendering. See, if you surrender your life over to him, you ain't going to be scared of the fall because you know when you fall, you in him because you didn't gave your life to him. That's what I'm talking about. See, the only people scared, the only people that should be scared are the ones that want to live how they want to live and do what they want to do. And they are scared. And most of those people, they don't, you know what? Most of those people that don't be the ones that don't want to hear nothing you got to say. When you start talking about end times and talking about how the heavenly father's judging and how Mashiach's coming back and first the anti-Mashiach, the antichrist got to come first and everything's getting ready to be haywire and disasters and plagues and moral corruption and they don't want to hear that. And the reason why they don't want to hear that is because they want to continue to live how they want to live, see? And they scared to hear that. That's why I don't want to hear, don't let me know. See, see no truth, hear no truth, speak no truth. They don't want to hear and the reason why is because they scared of it out of all of this this machismo and this bravado they don't want to hear that but you but you tough you see you a big man you a big man over here oh you the girl over here you the woman over here i'm a boss b i'm a boss b-i-t-c-h over here but when i'm when we talk about judgment and talk about correction you you don't want to hear that but it's not that you don't want to hear it you scared you scared because you want to keep living your own life. It fears you and frightens you of the thought of your own life going shot to hell. It, it scares you to it scares you to think about losing your beauty. It scares you to think about losing your strength. It scares you to think about losing your house. It scares you to think about losing your career. It scares you to think about losing your circle of friends that don't care nothing about you. It scares you. And so see, so since you so scared, you going to lose. You being scared 
is what's causing you to not surrender to our Heavenly Father. See, once you surrender to him, you ain't scared no more because now you feel free to live for him now. You free to live for him without caring about what people say about you, think about you, what they feel about. I don't care what you say about me, think about me, and feel about me. I don't care because I, I gave it to him. My Now, my reasonable service is for him. My reasonable service. So, see, once you get to that point, it, you, it, you no longer care about what people think and what they say and how they feel. I don't care about your feelings. Because you don't care about my heavenly father's feelings. What about how he feel? You don't care about how he feel. You don't care. You don't care about what he's saying. He's got a whole word here with his words in here, what he's saying. And you don't care nothing about how heavenly father feel. You don't care nothing about what he's saying. You don't care about what our heavenly father think, but I'm supposed to care about what you think. I'm supposed to care about what you feel and what you say. I don't care. You do not. I, I promise you. I don't care. That's the reason why I, I preach and teach the way I do. I don't care. No, I don't care. I ain't got no friends. I ain't got no family. I mean, I got my daughters and my mom and my wife and things, but this is the Davis ministry. And then my Davis ministry family, the body of Mashiach. I ain't got no friends. See, you know what? Because you know why? I counted the cost. I counted the cost. That's why I don't nothing bother me because I counted the cost. I got to count the cost. Why? Because I think about, okay, no friends, no partying, no get togethers on pagan holidays. I thought about no. See, I thought about all of that. I thought about that persecution. See, I thought about that. I thought about that. See, some of the stuff that I say could get me scrutinized and get me outed, get me killed. I thought about that. I thought about at the last minute being in front of somebody and asking me who I believe in. And I got to tell them and I got to tell them I believe in Yahuwah and Yahushua HaMashiach and I can't deny his name. I thought about that. So you got to think about that. Man, you got to think. You got to count the cost. Because it's going to cost you. It might not have costed you what it costed Yahushua, but it's going to cost you something. You know why? Because he took your sin that you got to take his righteousness. It's going to cost you something. And you got to look at it like this. It's going to cost you either way. It's going to cost you. It's going to cost you. For walking with Yahuwah, and it's going to cost you for walking with Satan. You got to think about what you want it to cost you. And if you walk in with Satan, it's going to cost you. Yo, it's going to cost you eternal life. If, you want, if you're willing to walk with Satan your whole life and don't want to, because you don't want to be, because you don't, because you don't want to live no boring life. And I don't want to be self-controlled. And I don't want people to look at me funny. I don't want my friends to hate me. I don't want my family to look at me like I'm funny. I don't want that. Okay, well, then you're going to live for Satan and then it's going to cost you eternal life. Fine, do that. Is your family members worth going to hell for? And they didn't care nothing about you. Ain't there one of them ever helped you do nothing, but you but you care about them. And they don't want to do nothing to Heavenly Father saying do. And the only reason why they and the only reason why they still getting blessed by Baal is because our Heavenly Father has allowed them to still get blessed by Satan and they can't see it. And so they'll never turn around and do what you're doing because everybody can't go. And that's the way it is. You got to leave, folk. You got to get on another level. And if you want to get on another level, a supernatural level, a spiritual level with our Heavenly Father, you got to leave the people back. You can't go with everybody. Everybody can't go with you. Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 to 14. Enter, enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow is the road that leads to life. And very few will find it. Don't you see the risk? You got to count the cause. You got to count that. No, you got to count it. Once you counted it. See, once you done added it all up and it equal eternal life forever, no more sickness, no more crying, no more trauma, no more hoping, no more wishing, no more dying, 
No more inflammation, no more cancers, no more infirmities, no more. See, you got to count the cost. I added it all up and I counted that. I say, okay, I'll take my suffering now. If my suffering is doing away with the world, let me suffer like that. I do that. I, I take it. I take it. I take that. Cause he didn't, cause he didn't already allow me to have the world anyway. He and to show me it wasn't gonna do nothing. He said, "See, see, I, I, I let you do stuff. See, I, I, I let you fornicate. I let you have premarital sex. I let you go to all the parties. See, I let you hang out on the street. See, I let you be defiant. I let you be disobedient." I let you drive home high and drunk numerous, countless times. See, I let you do that. I, I, I see. I let you live your life the way you want it. And to, for you to see, it, it ain't do nothing. Now you can live for me because I let you see how it was without me. And I was there with you. And I was there with you. I was there with you. And I let you go through. And I was pulling you up and pulling you out every time just to show you. See? Now, 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 ain't I the better option? See, the Heavenly Father, like, this narrow road looking job good, though, ain't it? I mean, that wide, I mean, you know, that 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 broad road, that wide gate, that that thing ain't, ain't, ain't all it's cracked up to be now, is it? I know that this where your mom and them going. I know all your friends and I know all your sorority sisters and frat brothers going down that way. I know. I know. I know all your celebrity friends going down that way. I know all of your queen and king turned up partners are going down that way. I know. But it don't look good down that way now, do it. Because, see, I done showed you. I done showed you the end result. See, they still walking down because they don't see the end result. But see, you are fortunate enough to be shown the end result. See, the Heavenly Father has graced us and blessed us to show you what it's like. While your friends and family still going down that way. He showed you so that you won't go, so that you can walk his way, so that you can tell them, stop going down that way. But sadly, people not going to listen because they so caught up. Listen, listen, because they so caught up on what they looking at, they don't even see the end. See, everything that they're looking at walking down that 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 wide road is see everything they're looking at is blinding them from the end. See, it's blinding them from the end. They don't see on the other side of the end to that 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 broad road. Heavenly Father showed you. Now you can let now you can work for him. Now freely. 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 See, narrow is the road. Enter. So basically, enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate. Now, you, I told you, you were born through the wide gate. You were born through the wide gate. You were born in the sand. You were born in the wide gate. If you want to keep going through the wide gate, do nothing. Just keep on living how you want to live and boom, boom, boom. And you're going to go and you ain't got to do nothing. See, the wide gate is your soul. That's your soul operating when you're going through that wide gate and that broad road. That's your mind, will, and emotions. That's your soul. See, Satan wants your soul. So, see, so since Satan wants your soul, he ain't never going to show you the bad stuff. That's the reason why he got to show you the good stuff, because he wants your soul. So, your soul is leading you down the broad road. And now, 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 now it's up to you. To listen to our Heavenly Father. It's up to you to see and heed his warnings and see what he's trying to show you. So that you can line your soul up with him. So you can go to, in the opposite direction. So that's why you was born going down the wide road. You was you were going down that wide, going through that wide gate, down that broad road. You was living. You was born going that way. Well, now you need to change that and go through the narrow. Yes. Yes, is yes is going to be some suffering. Yes. Yes. But the suffering ain't even going to be like you think. Because this suffering you blessed. See, the suffering for Satan, you destroyed. You cursed. Suffering for Satan, you cursed. Suffering for the Most High Yah, you blessed. 
you blessed. Even if you shall suffer for what is right. Even if you shall suffer for righteousness sake, you are blessed. Then the most high can use you up. You can use you. See? Man, when you die, you wanna, you want to have had the, you want to have been given. I mean, you want to, you want to have had given him his 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 due. That's right. Use me up. All the smoke I got, I did. I let me smoke all the way up for you. Let me be on the altar of sacrifice for you. Let me. Yes, right. I day. Come on. You know that's not. And, and the thing. And 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 the thing about it is, is that people think. You can't have fun. People think you live boring. People think that you can't. It's not, it's not like that. It's not like that. Your fun now is him. You see what I'm saying? Your fun now is him. Because even in the fun, it's a mission. It's, 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 it, you're safe. You're protected. See, you're safe and you're protected. You're, you're safe. You're protected. And it's fun. Because there's nothing better than seeing people grow because of what the most high Yah poured inside of you so that you can be a vessel to bless folk so that the people you blessing see past you and see our heavenly father. That's the fun. See, that's the fun part. The fun part is seeing people delivered and seeing the word change folk and seeing people live better, li live more liberated, not can. Because before they was having all this fun, but they had all these hangups. You, you get what I'm saying? All right, y'all. I am definitely coming down to the wire here. Yep. Oh, this a good one. This a good one. This a good one. This a good one. I, I, I'm going to go here. Real black history, y'all. Real black history. Real black history. That was the name of this message. Real black history. Hebrew. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 12. This is this is this is the ending. This is this is the last scripture. This said right here. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 28 to 29. Yep. Hosea, I'm going to throw this one in there before this. Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. My people perish for a lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge because they don't know. They don't know. And guess what? They don't know. They don't even know the law. See, they don't even know the Ten Commandments. They destroy because of that because they think they're under grace, but they don't even know the law. How are you going to be under grace and you don't even know the law? So you mean to tell me that he's okay. With you worshiping other Elohim. He's okay with that. Now, all of a sudden, he's okay. He's okay with that. You can worship other Elohims before me. You can do that. He's okay with that all of a sudden. See why you got to know the law? But see, my people are destroyed. He says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Well, that's right. They don't know the law. And they're being destroyed because they don't know it. They don't know the law. So they're being destroyed for what they don't know. So you see how knowing, so, so don't you see how not knowing is not blessed like the world told you? Ignorance is bliss. No, don't you listen to that foolishness. Ignorance will send you to hell quick. Ignorance will, man, ignorance will, ignorance will have you living miserable. It will destroy you. And then you going to go to the judgment torment side. And then in the end, you're going to be burning in sulfur fire. Sulfur burning fire. Nah, nah, ain't no ignorance. Nah, I don't want to be ignorant. I want to know. I want to know what I'm doing. I want to know what's before me. I want to know. I want to know. I don't want to not know. I want to know. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 28 to 29. I want to know. I want to know. And whatever I'm struggling with, Heavenly Father, I need your help. That's it. 
I found out a lot of stuff that I didn't particularly want that I did not particularly want to know, but I know I but I knew I needed to know that. So, okay. Thank you, Heavenly Father. I needed that. I, can you help me? Cuz I cuz I cuz that right there now I, I I need help. But see, people are too prideful to ask for help, and that's the reason why they don't. That's another reason why. See, that's the reason. There's another reason why people don't want to know because they don't want the help to come away. They they don't want that. They want to continue. All right. Listen, Hebrews chapter twelve verses twenty eight to twenty nine. This is it, y'all. This is it. I'm done after this. This is it. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful. Let us be thankful. And so worship Elohim acceptably with reverence and awe. 29. For our Elohim is a consuming fire. He's a consuming fire. See, therefore, since you're receiving the kingdom that can't be shaken, be thankful. Be thankful. Meaning, be thankful in that. Be thankful in the fact that you're going to that you're going to receive a kingdom for all of your hardship, all of your suffering, all of your labor, your toiling and your service. You're going to receive a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Be thankful for that. Be thankful because of that. And so worship him. So now worship Elohim because of that. Now worship him. I ain't talking about thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hey, no, no, no. Worship obedience. You, you see, the greatest form of worship is obedience. The greatest form of worship is repentance, obedience. And worship Elohim acceptably with reverence and awe. 29, for our Elohim is a consuming fire. He's a consuming fire. And that's the reason why I don't understand how people can say, they have a relationship with our Heavenly Father without going through Mashiach. Mashiach cleans you up constantly so you could be able to go before our Heavenly Father. Because without Mashiach, our Heavenly Father will consume you. You what you so listen, you so dirty that he will burn you right up. You can't stand before him. He burn you up. That's, that's the reason why you need to be on fire for him. So that's the reason why you got to be on fire for him. Why? Because he got fire. He's a, he is a consuming fire. So that when you stand before him, you'll be bright. He won't consume you because you'll be in the spirit. That's why you want to be in the spirit. So when you stand before him and since he's a consuming fire, he don't consume you up. But only you, but only, but that can only happen. The cleansing process to get you spotless is through Mashiach. Only Mashiach could get you spotless. So you could be able to stand before Heavenly Father. Without him consuming you. See, if you had to go now and stand before him, he'd burn you right up. He'd burn you up. Just like that. It's almost like you so, let's just say the Heavenly Father, let's just say he shined his light right now. He opened up heaven and shined his light. And let's just say, and you looked up. If you looked at him, you will burn up just at the sight of looking at him. As soon as you looked up, boom, you'll catch on fire and blow up, burn up. Why? Because you, you can't stand before him in this flesh. You cannot. You cannot stand before Heavenly Father in this flesh. He will burn you up. You be done. You do that dirty. That's why. This flesh don't mean nothing. That's why the only way you can see our Heavenly Father is through the Spirit. But you can't receive, but you can't get the Spirit until you receive Mashiach. And that's where our people, some of our people failing right there. They don't get that. See what I'm saying? And burn you up. He said his eyes are 10,000 times brighter than the sun. 10,000 times brighter than the sun. Now, you can't even imagine you can't even imagine that. That's that's unimaginable. It's unfathomable. It's 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 I can't even conceive that. You can't even 10,000 times? What I, I can't even what, what is that?
Meaning his presence alone, if he had to take the place of the sun, the whole world would be burnt up. If he had to come down, if he said, okay, I'm going to get the, uh, the sun ain't shining today. I'm going to come and shine. Uh, everybody's burnt up. That's how, that's how bright he is. His consuming, he's a consuming fire. He burn everybody. He burn as soon as he come and show up, burn up, boom, fire. And that's why you got to receive Mashiach so he can clean you up. So that when you stand before our father, you'll be clean. And that's the reason why people won't be able to stand before him during judgment. Why, what, that's the reason why they're going to, that's the reason why they're going to be gone. They're going to be going to the lake of fire. They can't, they ain't going to be able to, they ain't going to be able to deal with our Heavenly Father. They ain't going to be able to live with him. That's why he said nothing impure or unclean will ever enter this temple. It will never enter the kingdom. That's why nothing impure or unclean. It, it can't stand there. It can't exist there. But people think that they didn't grew wings and went to heaven. Bless their hearts. But that's not how it works. That's not how it works. The real black history, real black history, y'all. That's it. That's it. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Hallelujah. Father, we come to you on this great night, Father. We thank you, Father, so much for this message, Father. Father, we most certainly ask you, Father, that this message does not fall upon deaf ears, Father, that this message may reach those that it needs to reach, Father. Father, we just ask, Father, for your power and your presence. At the same time, we thank you for it, Father. We thank you for your grace and your mercy, Father. We thank you for your undying love, Father. We thank you for your patience with us, Father, how you've been patient with our lives, Father, and you've brought us from a mighty long way with still a long way to go, Father. We still have some things to do. There's a mission still at hand, Father. And we just thank you, Father, for the honor to be able to stand before you day in and day out, Father, and, and, and complete the mission. Father, we thank you for the Davis ministry family. Father, we ask, Father, that you would continue to bless their homes, their families, Father, that you would continue to encourage them and empower them, Father. Give them the authority daily, Father, that they need to be able to fight spiritually out here in this wicked world, Father. May you continue, Father, to protect the vehicles that they travel in and the roads that they travel on, Father. Father, may you continue, Father, to operate through the Davis ministry that we may continue, Father. May you shine your beacon of light through us, Father, that we may continue to honor and revere and magnify and glorify your name, Father, and teach with love, with accuracy, with patience, with faith, with boldness, unbiased. Father, we thank you for what you've already done, not what you're doing, but for, this, for what you've already done, Father, we thank you. We thank you for what you've already done. And we still can't even thank you enough for what you've already done. But Father, we thank you for what you've already done, for what you're doing, and for what we know you will do, Father, through thanksgiving, prayer, and supplication. Father, we ask, Father, that you would continue to forgive us for our sins, Father, past, present, and future, knowingly and unknowingly, in our thoughts, our words, and our deeds. Father, we ask, Father, that people would know who you are, that people will know Know their identity in you, Father, that our people, Father, your people, Father, will wake up and see who they are in you and see the world in which they live and how this world, Father, does not have their best interests at heart, that they need to turn around, Father. They've been going in the same wrong direction on the road to destruction for 30, 40, and 50 years, and it's not too late. You say every day you give us brand new mercies, Father. And so, Father, we ask, Father, that you would nudge the minds and the hearts of those, Father, who are going down the wrong way to turn around and repent. Father, we ask that you would most certainly deem us worthy to continue to go through this through this life, Father, and not be subjected to the judgments that are currently happening and the judgments that we are going to face. Father, we just say thank you for all that you've done and all that you're doing. And again, all that we know you will do. Thank you, Father. It is in all of these blessings that we do ask in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach, our personal Messiah and Savior, we pray. 
And we most certainly give you the highest, utmost praise. And we do gratefully say, hallelujah. 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 This was, this was a tough one. It's tough. It was, I mean, it, I mean, and you know, Heavenly Father, he's, 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 he's calling in this last hour. He's calling us. He's calling. He's calling. He's saying, I'm, I'm here. I'm here. I'm, I'm willing. If you're willing, I'm willing. That's the Heavenly Father. If you're willing, I'm willing. I, I'm, I'm here to help you. I'm, 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 I, I don't want anyone to go to hell. So I don't want to see. That's the Heavenly Father. He doesn't want anybody. That's why he says he doesn't count slowness like some count slowness. He does. He's, he wishes that no one goes to the lake of fire. That's the reason why he's slow. That's the reason why he's still slow. That's the reason why he's still saving. He's, that's the reason why. That's the reason why he. That's the reason why the United States of America is still up. That's the reason why. But he's letting stuff happen, and he's saying, "Y'all, come on, come on, y'all. Ain't, ain't, we ain't got too much longer before I'm start before it starts to heat all the way up. I'm telling you, I'm, 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 I'm causing stuff to happen so that y'all can see. You know. You know. I love y'all, sister. I'm, I'm, I, y'all. Listen, I ain't calling no names. I love all of y'all. You know. Um, all praise to the Most High for you all. Um, may he continue to bless you all. Um, for those who sustain the Davis ministry in any in any way, whether it's through gifts and offerings, through prayer, whether it's through coming on and receiving the word, we receiving from Yah. Hey, listen, I, I you know I appreciate you all. You know, because at the end of the day, again, it's a, it's about that word. It's about that word. If nobody gets the word, then, then we can't eat. See, people be saying, if we don't get money, we can't eat. No, sir. You know, if you don't get that word, you can't eat. If you don't get that word, you can't eat. It's, it ain't about that. See what I'm saying? You see how we got it twisted? If you ain't got the money, you can't eat. No, because guess what? what what's going to happen when the system turn over and you ain't got no money? You're going to still be able to eat off the word. You're going to still be able to eat. See, if you ain't got that word, you you done. You you can't eat. You can't eat. Food won't even satisfy you. How you think people grow to come on, y'all? How you think people gain all that weight and be six, seven, eight hundred, nine hundred pounds? The food ain't do it. See how the food didn't do it? And so, you know, hey, that's it. That's it, y'all. I love you all. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's real. It's real out here. It is so real. It's real. It is real. Shab yeah, 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 yeah. Shabbat Shalom. Rest. Rest. Get in the word. Um, that's it, you guys. That's it. So we, we still, we still have, we, we still got, we still on the mission. We still have, we still have, uh, work to do. There's still people out here that are lost and don't know. And there's still people that the heavenly father's still trying to bring in. So we haven't lost hope. You know, hope has not been lost. Hope has not been lost. And you know, in him, we, but we already won. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. I want to say that. Keep that in mind. In him, in Yah, we've already won in him. So no matter what comes and what happens, we've already got the we already got the victory. We already got the victory already. We ain't looking to win nothing. We already won. We're on the winning team. We're on the winning side. No matter what look what it looks like. See, Satan's gonna throw some stuff out there to make it look the opposite way. No, no, no. See, that's what he's doing for people he got. No, no, we know that whatever Satan shows us, it's the opposite for us because we're in him. See, we're in, we're in our heavenly father. See, we are in Yahuwah through Yahushua HaMashiach. So we ain't got, we ain't, we ain't got nothing to be worried about. What we worried about? Ain't, ain't, what we, what are we worried about? There's no worrying and none, no, ain't no worrying. 
Ain't no anxiety and fear and all of the stuff that the world goes through. See, when the world is weak, we should be strong. See? When the world is in darkness, we should be in light. See, when the world is miserable and sad and depressed, we should be full of joy and with peace. That surpasses all understanding. And that's what's going to happen. That's what's going to continue to happen as we draw nearer and nearer towards these dark times. The people going to be looking at us crazy because they're going to be saying, what the world? They're going to really be thinking we the aliens for real. They're going to think we alien because stuff's going to be happening and we're going to be going through it and all that. They're going to be like, what in the world? That's what's, See, that's what's going to make them turn us over to the authorities because they're going to say, man, they ain't human. How in the world all this going on and they ain't, and they ain't crazy and they ain't jumping off a bridge and they ain't how? how? How are they sustaining like that? We done lost everything and they still got and they still moving and they still. And that's what's happening. Everybody, that's right. Everybody falling apart and everybody. No, we're going to be going strong. You know, we 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 gonna we gonna be going strong. Even when we even when we go through little moments of hiccups, we still gonna be going strong. Because the Heavenly Father, because see, you gotta think about it like this: the hiccups you gonna face on this road is gonna be tests. You still gonna be tested. You are, you get you get what I'm saying? Because He's always trying to draw you closer. He's always trying to get you on the next level. So that means that it's gonna be some tests you gonna go through. It's gonna be some stuff, but that's only to keep you with Him. That's only for you to get stronger in Him. That's it. So you just, but you, so you gotta know, you gotta know that. You gotta know that when you facing stuff and stuff come up, you gotta know that, hey, wait a minute, this is a test. You gotta treat it as that because you with the most high. You with him. You ain't got to be trying to figure out how to get him, how to get in contact with him. You ain't gotta try to figure out who to call on. What, what, you see, that's foolishness. I got to, I, he's already there. So, I'm in him right there. That's it. You guys, I love you all. That's it. Stay encouraged. Stay, stay, you know, stay, stay full of hope and faith. Keep your notifications on, on YouTube. Um, um, again, you know how we do. We come in with the, with the movie nights on, uh, on these any given Shabbat nights. So stay tuned for that. Stay tuned. Stay tuned for um, Watcher Technology. That's the next one we have coming on uh, YouTube Live. You, yeah, yeah, it's going to be a premiere. You know how we do it with the movies. So, um, yeah, you guys, that's it. I love you all. Stay on the road. Stay on the road. Don't throw in the towel. Stay in coverage. I love you all. All right. I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.